。好，大家好啊，呃大家好，早晨。咁、呃、我哋可以開始我哋今日嘅 event 啦。咁、呃、首先我介紹翻自己先。呃、我係 HKIBM 嘅 Head of Training 啦，我 Kevin Wen 啦。咁今日咧、呃，我哋好榮幸咧，就可以請到、呃、三位嘅 speaker 嚟分享、呃、一啲佢哋關於誒 BIM 嘅一啲經驗嘅。咁我哋分別咧有、呃、Jason Lee 啦，有阿、呃呃、羅總啦，咁同埋有、呃、我身邊嘅 Leo 嘅。咁誒，佢、呃、哋都係分別嚟自就誒、呃、M Mosa 啦，咁誒、呃、CSCC China 啦，即係誒、呃、CSWADI 啦，同埋誒 SketchUp 嘅同事嘅，咁佢分享下嘅。咁誒喺我哋首先開始之前呢，呃、我哋會請返誒、呃、我哋嘅誒 Chairman 啦，阿、啊、Simon 五啦，有一個 Opening Speech 先嘅。咁啊，有請 Simon。Hello，Hello， hello, 早晨，咁多位朋友啊！我 share 個 screen 先，好，咁啊，我有少少開場白啦嚇，歡迎大家嚟到我哋今日嘅 CPD 嘅依個 webinar 嘅 event 嘅，咁我哋應該係第一次咁樣早上搞嘅誒、呃、webinar 嘅 event 嘅，咁就可能是第一嘗嘗試下呢個新嘅時間嚇，睇下會唔會有個新嘅一啲。誒思想上嘅衝擊啦，係嘛？好，咁我就有少少誒、嗯，即係簡簡介翻我哋個會近排有發生啲有啲咩 update 啦，或者未來啲咩 event event update 嘅。好，咁啊，首先嗱，即係可能大家都知道我哋學會誒一二零零九年成立，咁我哋其實今嚟緊一年咧，二四年咧，亦都會進行我哋十五週年嘅嘅嘅，我哋都。誒已經去到十五週年啦，咁你都會打算咧有啲十五週年嘅慶祝活動嘅，咁到時大家有同朋友咧有啲咩意見咧，都可以嚟同我哋講下啦。咁嗱，其實我哋一個全純粹以 BIM 為中心嘅一個學會啦，我哋會 promote BIM 啦，我哋會同誒各大嘅機構同埋政府部門咧去聯繫啦，一齊去推動。喺成個業界邊推動 BIM 嚇，咁包括技術嘅 standard 啦，為做啲 promotion 啦，甚至為啲 research 啦，誒甚至為啲就業嘅指導咁樣等等嘅嚇，咁呢個可以雖然大家都係比較清楚我哋個學會啦。咁嗱，其實咧，我我都想講咧，其實我哋過去十五年咧，即係一直見證住 BIM 喺香港嘅發展嘅，即係由以前可能好多好耐之前 ，BIM 係大家就係講 3D coordination 嚇，而家已經唔係唔淨止講呢啲嘢，我哋講 information management。以前咧，大家用 BIM 咧，即係試下嘅啫 ，proof of concept 嚟啫，試下係睇下係咪得得唔得㗎，係咪真係真係真係有有效益㗎。而家咧就變咗唔使諗㗎啦，政府係 mandate 嘅，啊政府話大家一定要做 BIM 嘅，唔使諗㗎啦。以前咧 BIM 咧，大家都係覺得同 Jasper 好似 3D 嘅 Jasper 咯嚇，但係其實而家咧 BIM 已經係個 professional， 啊大家要考牌，考 professional member， 考 CBC、CBM 咁樣。以前咧講 BIM 咧，我哋就係講。即係幾個 software 啦，我哋點樣運用 software 嚇？但係而家咧，我哋講 open beam 啦，同埋 automation 啦嚇，即係大家會寫好多 script 啦嚇，點樣 auto 去 automate 一啲嘢。以前咧，我哋就局限喺香港入邊嘅交流嚇，咁而家咧，我哋都再擴展到大灣區、全中國甚至全世界嘅。咁啊，即係其實一路一路喺度演變緊。但係有一樣嘢不變咧，就係、是、我哋嘅初心都係話，我哋希望運用啲新嘅技術去改變呢、這、一個呢、這個業界。誒呢個 game changing 一個 innovation 嘅 mindset， 咁所以話其實咧，我哋咧一路咧抱住呢一個誒抱負咧一個使命咧，去推動呢個呢個業界嘅。咁所以咧嗱，其實我哋今屆咧誒一共有有十二位 committee 啦嚇，咁我哋咧亦都咧誒有有幾個唔同嘅誒 com 嘅誒 committee 去去去推去幫助推動我哋我哋嘅嘅嘅一啲一啲理念嘅，包括 membership 啦，有 technical 啦，有 training 啦。events marketing 啦、publicity 啦，同埋 conduct 咁樣等等嘅嚇。好，咁啊，過往我哋搞嘅 event 啦，包括好似今日咁嘅 webinar 啦嚇，咁我哋亦都會誒、呃、會誒、呃、會搞我哋一啲嘅 BIM Award 啦嚇。咁嚟緊我哋今年年度二零二三年度嘅 BIM Award 咧，應該好快咧喺第四季咧就會推出嚟㗎啦嚇。到時大家準備㗎咯嚇。咁啊，亦都我哋舊年誒今年年初咧，好成功搞一個叫華山亮邊邊 automation 嘅一個一個一個比賽啦嚇。咁我哋咧打算咧喺二誒二五年咧，亦都會舉辦嘅。咁啊，亦都我哋搞過好多好 innovative 嘅啦，譬如我哋舊年作過首歌啦嚇。咁遲啲我哋仲有更加多好好 innovative 嘅嘢係不停地去推出俾大家嘅。咁啊 ，sorry。咁啊，大家關注我哋啦，包括關注我哋嘅 website 啦。
誒，包括關注我哋嘅 social media 啦嚇。咁咧，其實啱啱兩日之前，我哋再推出埋咧，誒，即係除咗除咗 Facebook， 除咗 LinkedIn， 除咗 YouTube 之外咧。誒，我哋都推出咗我哋嘅微信嘅公眾號嚇，咁啊，可能大家用開微信嘅話咧，都可以關注埋我哋啦。好嗱，咁啊講少少我哋個學會一啲最近嘅 update 啦嚇。咁誒，其實我哋今年誒喺誒七月份嘅時候咧，咁我哋咧同香港發展局咧亦都有個會面嘅嚇。咁啊，其實大家即係發展局係制定香港 BIM 嘅政策嘅嘅機機構。咁我哋作為一個即係邊一個最大嘅代嘅團體嘅代表啦，咁我哋都交流咗我哋意見嚇。咁包括即係每年香港誒發展工會一份 technical circular 關於佢個邊 mandate， 咁我哋都發表咗啲意見啦。咁而家究竟香港而家邊嘅人才嘅人手夠唔夠咧？嚇咁誒，亦都其他嘅技術啊，例如 open 邊啊，我哋能唔能夠做到邊誒入職啊？嚇咁誒，亦都誒，我哋關注即係政府亦都關注到 software， 我哋即係係咪就係用死一隻 software 咁樣等等，我哋都都關注咗好多嘅誒，即係發展咗好多好多意見俾香港政府嘅。咁所以咧，其實咧誒，香港政府咧佢誒特首咧佢誒嚟緊嘅施政報告咧，咁亦都佢哋咧誒非常之非常之重視邊嚇，非常之重視科技嘅發展，所以咧亦都請咗我哋個學會咧去。去誒做佢個施政報告嘅一個誒 consultation 嘅 forum 嘅嚇，咁我哋亦都發表咗幾個一啲關於 BIM development 嘅一啲意見啦嚇，包括嗱即係政府講咗好好耐嘅啦 ，BD submission BIM 係咪可以做到咧嚇？咁我哋都督請政府咧，希望去繼續去落實呢一樣嘢啦。咁其實咧，我哋亦都見到咧 BIM 嘅趨勢咧，香港越嚟越多一啲即係自己開發一啲工具嘅。咁喺即係政府一啲分領上面，會唔會有多啲 support 咧嚟到鼓勵我哋去做一啲做多啲 development 嘅 support 咧？嚇，咁呢個亦都即係我哋提倡咗啦。嚇，咁亦都即係譬如而家我哋見到香港而家好多唔同嘅 standard 嚇，咁我哋有冇即係即係當然 CIC 係做一個 harmonisation 啦，我哋可唔可以繼續即係再加速呢一樣嘢，係真係可以真係做到 harmonise 成個成個業界？嚇，咁即係除咗 Hamilton 之外咧 ，CSDI 亦都話即係提供咗好多嘅 resources 嘅，咁其實我哋都希望即係將呢個繼續發揚光大嘅嚇。咁啊，另外仲有誒，即係誒好多時即係話 BIM， 我哋做雖然做到 BIM and data， 咁亦都即係有有一啲即係市場嘅競爭關係咧，可能對於 BIM 嚟講咧都未必有咁強嘅資源。咁呢一樣嘢，政府係咪再鼓勵多啲咧？即係例如即係政府規定真係要真係會有。真正見到一個 BIM team 嚇，或者真係或者 separate 一個 contract 咧，係咁樣等等，我哋都希望同政府去探討，我哋 open 去同同政府探討呢一呢一樣嘢嘅。好啦，咁啊，講下嚟緊啦，我哋其實會有啲乜嘢發生緊咧，準備緊咧，咁啊一個就係 App Store 啦，咁啊其實華山論 BIM 嘅呢個活動咧，我哋發覺咧原來香港咧係有好多嘅。誒、呃、一啲即係去寫 script 啊，或者發甚至要推發一啲 BIM 嘅 tools， 咁我哋咧希望 set up 一個 B App Store 嘅平台咧，可以咧令到更加多人咧去分享一啲即係 BIM automation 嘅一啲 tools 嘅嚇，咁、啊、呢個請留意我哋嚇、啊，我哋好快就會推出嚟啦。咁另外關於誒頭先提過啦，啊 BIM Award 我哋會嚟緊第四季我哋就會推出啦嚇。咁咧嚟下年咧，下二四年咧，我哋咧就會同中國嘅圖學學會。中國圖學會咧就可以話係即係我哋對標喺國內全中國咧推 BIM 嘅一個比較誒誒即係一個學會嘅大家知道喺中國咧叫得做學會咧係唔容易嘅嚇，咁即係亦都得到政府嘅支持嚇，咁所以咧係中國比較官方嘅一個推 BIM 嘅一個機構啦。咁佢咧誒佢每年咧有個全國性嘅 conference 啊，咁嚟緊二四年咧佢就會嚟到香港嚟到嚟到香港咧，佢哋亦都會同我哋咧去合辦咧嚇，我哋就承辦咧佢哋依個誒即係香港站嘅全國性嘅一個 conference 啊。咁呢個亦都大家敬請留意啦嚇，我哋遲啲有呢個消息嘅。咁啊，二零二五年咁我哋繼續華山論邊啦嚇，咁我哋希望每兩年會有一次咁樣咁嘅盛事嘅嚇。咁亦都提頭先提過啦，我哋即係二四年係我哋嘅十五週年嚇，咁我哋希望咧即係誒去搞多啲嘅慶祝活動啊。咁啊，亦都希望我哋會會盡量。誒誒 engage 同誒會員咧多啲參加，例如我哋會搞一個 logo competition 啦，嚇咁我哋可能會整個特刊啦，嚇咁我哋知道咧，其實邊界咧啊，除咗好多音樂人之外咧，亦都有好多
，有多文青，係有好多誒誒誒有有文化水平好高嘅人啊，咁我哋都希望咧，即係可以可以會唔會同同會員咧誒、呃、投稿寫多啲誒關於十五週年嘅啲啲編嘅文章咁樣嚇。咁啊，我哋其他嘅，譬如話 social media 繼續繼續繼續去推推推騰啦。咁我哋都有啲諗法，譬如我哋即係其實 BIM 已經嚟到第二代、第三代人員，咁我哋會唔會有一個我哋呢都係個傳承嘅一個理念？咁我哋會唔會即係設立一個 mentorship 去指導由我哋啲有經驗嘅 BIM 啦，去指導一啲誒年青嘅 BIM 嚇，等令令到我哋更加知道 BIM 係啲咩，或者更加容易去考牌啦嚇。咁誒，咁亦都我哋要擴大，我哋會誒增強我哋誒後生嘅 division 啦，嚇 China division 啦，嚇咁啊，亦都我哋會有啲一啲另類啲嘅超啲嘅 gathering 咁樣，嚇咁嘅未來，咁大家請留意我哋嘅一啲 social media 或者一啲渠道嘅。OK， 咁啊，我講嘅嘢誒就差唔多啦，咁啊，我將時間交翻俾阿 Kevin Man 啦，嚇咁誒，我哋個 webinar 嚇咁大家 enjoy 嚇，跟住嚟個 CBD， 唔該曬。Hello Kevin， 你 mute 咗啊？系系唔好意思啊，啱啱 mute 咗。系诶，咁、呃、我多谢晒 Simon 嘅诶嘅分享啦。咁啊，我哋而家咧就啊开始我哋嘅今日嘅诶第一个 speaker 就系阿诶阿 Jason Lee 啦，诶 Emo 诶 Moser 嘅。咁啊，佢诶今日想分享俾大家嘅 topic 咧就系 Don't work for beam、哦。咦？咁点去 Don't work for beam 咧？咁我等阿诶 Simon 咧嚟分享一下啦。诶，有请 Simon。嗯，所以我先至开始，系啊系，我我我冇问题，系嘛 ？OK， 诶 ，OK， 所以诶系，诶我可以讲广东话，但系我广东话唔算好，所以我今日系讲英文嘅，即系成个 slide 咧，我系我系我系我系执咁系系系系系系系广东话啫，希望可以帮啊帮到大家。Jason， 你可以讲英文都得嘅，讲英文都得嘅。Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, sure, yeah, sure. Sure. So today, I just want to share about uh, as our title seeing here is is not like one for all of, uh, of the uh, building information models models, um, and just a quick introduction about our company. So um, I uh, work with uh, Mozer Associates, uh, which happen to be that we are a Hong Kong headquarter company. Uh, we work uh, mostly for workplace uh, uh, design and, and delivery. So it's considerably as uh, we call it IPD, so integrated project delivery. Uh, and uh, we have 1,400 plus um, different uh, professional discipline of expertise worldwide um, with nearly around like 30 offices globally. I believe most of you guys in Hong Kong probably heard our names before. So my name is Jason. Uh, currently, the associate director for design integration, simulation, and technology global team. Um, I have full suite of like uh, sustainability and wellness credentials, plus um, also well faculty, um, and also a triple visiting professional, specific, uh, spe uh, especially on um, yeah, BIM and uh, VDC, the virtual and the construction. Okay, so. Um, Today, I'm just going to talk about like five things in general. So about from definition to exploration about designing and uh, how we deliver and how we actually uh, hand over the whole stuff uh, through a kind of like project life cycle. And by the way, that every day I'm talking about today is mostly about like workplace interiors because that's what we mostly uh, do in a certain sense. So let's just get started. Okay. So starting with the definition of the BIM, as you can see right here, uh, there are three different definitions on building information modeling. The top one is from uh, US and the second one is from uh, UBS, which is the, uh, uh, the UK standard. And the last one is uh, where I am in Singapore. So individually that we are seeing, I mean, each country that have different definitions on how they identify the BIM stuff. Um, in America, that they choose to be a digital representation um, but in UK, they think it's a work, uh, it's a workflow, it's a process. In Singapore, we saw it as a core technology. So everyone doesn't really have a universal definition of the BIM. I mean, the BIM, this term, right? So um, 
on technical side, how does it actually manipulate? I'm, I'm, I mean, this is more basic. I believe everyone knows it is we have a model and we have certain classifications. Uh, might as well, if you're using Revit, you're calling it families. And we have certain, uh, well, information, um, metadata attributes. And thereafter, they have been um, compiled into, let's say, a universal format of BIM, which is IFC. And via the Building Smarts IFC schema that we can actually establish a exchange, I mean, the, the file, file exchange to individual softwares or over a CDE, the, the, the common data environment. Um, in visually, how does it look like we have, let's say there's a BIM and we have to fill up certain parameters and via the IFC, then we can transfer and share and collaborate over a certain like data server, recognized data server, uh, uh, BIM software, so applications or web apps. All right, but however, there are more than 350 of the software implementations listed on the BSI. Okay. And we have like model authoring tool, probably uh, which one of them, uh, SketchUp, Trimble SketchUp, we're gonna talk about it. And we have model viewers as well, data server, uh, things like BIM 360 last time and uh, Trimble Connect or EchoSim. So there's a lot of them can be used. Um, there are a lot of tools to choose from anyway. So um, what is BIM actually? Actually, I, I know that actually today, a lot of people is actually BIMmer. So um, probably we often hear people saying that before we actually become a BIMmer, saying that BIM can um, save the money, save the cost, save the time, improve the efficiency. And we always talk about like the forward direction or the reverse, the backward direction BIM. Um, and thereafter, normally people will show something, whoever is trying to sell this service, like, okay, so we have a BIM, like 2D drawings, and we definitely, the drawings came from the 3D model. And thereafter, normally what we'll be showing is animation, is like how this building is being built, with the dates, with the uh, sequence, and so on and so forth. That's so-called the, the, the BIM 4D, the virtually in the construction. And thereafter, step into like less than average work. Uh, show people like how we extract the information as a uh, as a spreadsheet or typically a CSV or a Excel uh, from the BIM model from various professional disciplines, right? So, and also we some some of some of us might might have talked about the operation and maintenance, which uh, now is being uh, seriously looked at because the operational carbon is really occupies more than eighty percent of the overall life cycle carbon emissions. Uh, but somehow it's likely it's gonna be the same. So uh, now it's work, you can do that. Um, a lot of people is keep in emphasizing on using Revit to do design, which quote unquote, and uh, now it's work to do like clash detections, right? So and so, and so forth. And you're able to following the full life cycle or the full project pro progress. And uh, people keep speaking on this LOD, the level of developments to 500 as an SBU, something like that, quite fancy. And also talk about the forward direction of BIM. Means that the BIM is actually happening with the, alongside with the project together. Um, but in reality, um, to use, I, I mean, I use all this for years. So to me, I mean, at least to me, I'm not talking about architecture, by the way. So I, I, with all due respect, that I'm mostly doing workplace interiors for now, at least. Um, using Revit to do a design is, 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 I mean, all these kind of a terms that you use like families or instances or attributes, they all have equivalencies in the BSI terms, like classifications, right? Definitions, metadata. Um, but what I'm thinking was, I mean, before I, and wrote on this, on this journey that, um, well, UK is so great, uh, US is so great, but does that really applicable in Asia? Um, like our scenarios, because the client we are facing is different, the culture is different. So this is my first question. And the second thing is like using average work to do like clash detections, trying to figure out the, the problems. I understand the full philosophy. It does, it, it does make, make sense, all right? But, However, does the designers or architects knows how to do this? <clears> oh, <throat> to the maximum, does all the engineers are aware of that, right? Or we have to be a, a BIM expertise. Uh, so it requires specific skills to do this. 
Um, <clears throat> so that's my second question. There is a standalone discipline is doing this, right? Um, and also saying that following throughout the whole process of the project until the project is handed over, the promise is so good, but the reality, I believe that you all have experienced that, is basically that every time we have a revision or every time we have a, a overhaul on the design, <clears throat> then we just do a Revit remodeling from scratch because of families instances, the attributes just has been moved, shifting around. So a lot of things will 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 have collisions. So we have to do keep keep on doing remodeling, remodeling, remodeling based on this design proposal, even a can drawing. All right. But however, there is because it's a manual process, so there is no way they can make it 100 percent perfect. Anyway, there will be always be some glitches anyway. So in schematic design or or like you know conceptual design, then there are detailed design, design development, construction documentations, and as we designs, right? Every time you need to do a remodeling just to make sure that everything is flawless, at least you can get out the drawings. I mean, that's most of the the audiences that I have been encountering, including I mean, like seven, eight years ago, like my colleagues, when the first time they, they kind of like get into this BIM, BIM stuff. So that's what we actually realize. Um, and for the, speaking of the LOD, it's also, it's also kind of like, um, I mean, for me, I've, I've been doing this for, well, nearly, I could say a decade. So, so, and also I'm a lead AP, like operation and maintenance. So I know a lot of stuff about operation and maintenance facility management. And I keep thinking that during my design and during my delivery, but I, to be frank, I really re rarely say, I cannot be so absolute, right? But very rare for me to see any of the F the facility managers you see Navis, Navis work to do like facility equipments, like those kind of like uh, uh, threat sheets or the summaries, right? Uh, everyone is using basically Word, Excel, PowerPoint just to do their job, right? And Speaking of that, it's quite common that you have a model with all the information and you extract some things that other people has been inputted, right? So to me, that's not really a very technical, like fascinating stuff, actually. And everyone is talking about ISO, everyone is talking about LOD, but uh, in reality, there is no enforcement in ISO standard uh, mentioning that we have to use a certain particular software to do this job. It's just marketing, right? Um, the last part is actually, uh, well, that's actually happening a lot in China mainland, <clears throat> which is closer to you guys. Um, whenever time that when they say um, we're forward direction of BIM, that the BIM is happening, you know, at almost at the same time, everyone's claimed that it's happening at the same time. While we design, we, we develop and we do the construction documentations during the construction, we have changes, it's always being updated to the BIM. But in fact, it's just a it's just a labor work to me because that's what I've seen. I've I've witnessed so many of this. Even my uh, even myself have been once there was once or twice that I I personally been involved. But this does help you to get more money. I mean to stretch more on your contract value. I understand, but as I said, in reality, it's just reverse because your BIM information is not really real time update while you're modeling where you're updating the design, okay? The designers and architects will change the design, okay? And at, what we do is actually, okay, we summarize all the changes, we're coming back remodeling the stuff. But what is the forward direction? The actual forward direction is you have a model, then you have some simulations done, like daylight simulations, energy simulations about the space, and thereafter you have zoning plans and you have a test fit, right? Like a general arrangement plan, layout plan. And thereafter, you have the VR stuff, you have the animation, and you also, after all the walls and partitions and everything has been put in with the glazing and so on and so forth, so you have a more detailed simulation to confirm what your assumption was, right? And you can do a, a, a primary clash detection already because uh, as 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 I've keep mentioning that what I'm talking about is about interior. So if let's say we have an existing commercial unit in some of the office towers, let's say in Hong Kong, uh, we definitely will have the SPU. We have we will check against the uh, the the site conditions, and thereafter we have a model, right? And we can do a, a little bit more clash detection already, or even manipulate of the MEP elements. And thereafter, you have the more detailed part on the furniture design and 
elevation designs, the details, the joint, the joiner details, the construction documentations, and also virtual design construction, value engineering, clash detection. And thereafter, you have all these kind of like further information, right? And all of them supposedly to be happening as a link or happening as an attachment or happening as a Boolean choices, which is true or false, yes or no, inside the model. So that when people using your model, with, which with so many information in it, that it can actually get the answer real quick. So it's more like expandable stuff. So on the way, yes, you're, you, you start with the same model. You start with the same whatever plan in 2D or whatever, like LD100, it's fine, but it's, it's a gradually expanding process. Instead of every time have a change, then you're going back and reverse it, reverse, reverse engineering to model something new. So that's the total, it's, it's totally different. All right. So um, to be frank that I haven't been really doing, I mean, I don't, I don't actually sell those kind of like BIM packages or literally like uh, doing like BIM service agreements, like a contract for years. Before the COVID, I was kind of like given up already because I realized that uh, based on the market reality back then that that may not be something that I really want to do. But one of the things that I think is most important, because my team is fully capable in doing this nowadays, and it's not really relying on particular softwares. They can do it in multiple ways, or multiple software, multiple platforms. Um, they all have to give up uh, the thought about the drawing is very, very critical. So once you have to get rid of that kind of thoughts before you actually really go and hug the BIM stuff, all right? So um, every time we're talking about safe money, safe time, safe manpower, but in reality, what it is, is say it's actually to get the communication and collaboration done at ease. That's the most important thing. Why? Because if person A and person B is talking, right? They really understand each other. They have visual, they have visual representations to do visual communications. They understand each other there will be less discrepancies. Less discrepancies means that whatever information you pass to this guy, let's say a site worker, that he will he or she will build according to it, right? So there is, you can save the you know, redundant works. And also you save time because the communication has been more effective. And thereafter, you need less person, you need less professionals to be involved to do the same job. So basically what I'm going to talk about is focusing how we actually can focus on, 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 on getting the real communication done at ease, all right? So starting off that, we need to analyze the site. But however, that Trimble with the SketchUp, I'm not sure whether you guys know, know it, it's like we have this pre-designed thing. So you just need a address and it will give you certain uh, like data, which is a uh, weather data mostly. So it can give you strategies as well, like how you're gonna do the shading as you can see right here. And it gives you like different types of stuff. And also it helps you to identify like on North, East, West, or South, which side the sunlight is gonna be very, you know, it's it's gonna be harmful. It's like overlit, right? Somewhere is, is, is good, right? So at least you know gen generically about the building itself. And uh, also that kicks in about um, simulations. Uh, so I mainly use Sephora during this early stage. And this is one of the projects in Shanghai. It's a very famous uh, developer, Shanghai local developer, I think, uh, and definitely top three. So they're their headquarter building. And this building, um, the architect, um, I'm not sure whether have any employees sitting in this session. Uh, I'm not going to mention the mention name, by the way. So the case here is like this. As you can see that we have done this uh, data uh, analysis, right? Data simulations. And there was a proposal. Okay. So it says that, you know, like B1 and B2, they were talking about the architects uh, plan the B1, the basement one as the copper. And then the employees canteen, they plan it under B2. All right. So that was the original proposal. So the client come to us and say that, hey, Moser, um, so my architects proposed this, um, but I'm worrying, you know, on the B2, there is no daylight, there is no light in generally. And B2 is pretty, sounds like weird to have a canteen, right? And the architects proposed to open up like three 
um, like skylights, skylight, linear skylight holes. They say that it's going to work. So based on our experience as interior designers that we think it's not going to work. And the architects was, was quite, uh, I, I couldn't say any, anything negative here, but it just said that you can prove, if you can prove it, we, accept, we take your proposal. Okay, so we literally did this. And if you can see right here under B1 and B2, the B2 is totally blue out. The blue out means that there is no light. Okay, based on the real model that we actually model the, the correct height of this building based on their design, that these skylights, quote unquote skylights, is not gonna get you any lights under B2 because why? Lights attenuate. Okay, so it's not really about like, you can propose anything to the client, but you have to propose like responsibly. Uh, and also you gotta make sure that it works, right? So in the end, the client, declined the proposal and shifted the, the usage of the, the floors. Uh, Canteen is under B1, okay? So that's that's one of the story I just wanna share with you guys, like uh, using simulations to help you to make real um, good decisions. Um, <clears throat> and actually to just expand from there, like why this simulation is so important. Um, everyone, I mean, Hong Kong using Brain and uh, Singapore, we have BCA Greenmark and we have lead and well. So every site, if you analyze it carefully, that you will realize that from zero lux to, well, 800 lux, right? There are suitable space types for it. There are, okay? So whatever kind of modules or whatever kind of functionalities that you're gonna place, let's say around the perimeter or closer to the call, it's a series of actions to responding to the natural environment conditions on site. And that's very, very important because everyone is talking about sustainability now, nowadays. I'm so happy to, to see this, but how does that blend into the design? It's not really you getting a certificate. It's not you get a lead platinum or, you know, like feet well or whatever. It's not like that. It's about really huckle and really think about it right from the start. So you need to do analysis beforehand. You do any planning, right? And that will be it. Like, and that will definitely help you guys to, to, to catch and persuade the client to buy in whatever you have been planning, which is reasonable. Uh, for instance, I show you now this, this floor plan. It doesn't make any sense, right? I, if I'm trying, to, I'm trying to be very passionate, I talk about design, I show the renderings, I show the 3D models, the client may not be impressed and just say that, you know, you know what, I just don't like it. But with the simulation results, you will have more theories behind, okay? And that will back you up in front of the client to let them know that you're placing the right stuff. You're placing the right human activities at the right place, the most suitable place, all right? So that will definitely help. Okay, so uh, that's the, uh, actually that that was the CR land, the China resource, uh, uh, one of the job. We've done a lot of uh, jobs for, with them. So um, every job starting the same, in a model, we model everything, MEP, structural elements in SketchUp real quick. And thereafter we do the simulations, we do the planning. Uh, there's a video, but I'm not, I'm, I don't wanna occupy too much time to play in this though. So let's just skip that. Okay. And also there are so many tools that you can study uh, what's on site for the MEP uh, elements. As in right here, this is uh, the twin motion online. So, um, well, twin motion, you, you all know is from Epic Games. So this is, well, this is their office actually. Uh, I remember it was in Seattle somewhere. So uh, when we're trying to, I mean, when during the first meeting that we were talking about like how they say that, how you, how you guys gonna save the cost for me, right? So we, we showed them this. So that, look, we have quickly modeled the stuff that is actually on site. And there is a second scene, which is um, showing them, you know, after the, the proposed partitions going on. So how this kind of MEP is not gonna be obstructed right? And how it's going to be just minor relocating some certain stuff that would be good. So let to help the clients buy in. All right. And also this is a really old job. It's like back in 2014 or 13. I, I can't, can't remember. It's in India. So last time I think the BIM word is not, not really that popular back then, but what we do is, uh, so what we do here, it wasn't being called like, uh, like, MEP modeling or a clash detection or something. But what we actually did is we literally modeled out everything, okay, based on the drawings and 
check against the site. And thereafter, we have literally see it. But this is about like 10 years ago. So 10 years ago, there wasn't really any tools to help, but SketchUp was here. Um, and we just use SketchUp to quickly model the stuff and we just get it because the last time doesn't really have like the Trimble command nowadays has the, this kind of like auto clash detection, you know. It's literally manually virtual, we call it virtual sidewalk. So we literally walk inside this, this SketchUp after merging all these disciplines and we just visually inspect like everything if it's correct now. And that helped us a lot, I could say, because the job was in India. And uh, many of you guys probably work on Indian jobs before. So the site management is a big issue. The labors is uh, is, is a big issue. And also the local like MEP design firms or consultants, uh, it's also a big issue. So what you can do, um, you can just model their stuff and just help them to combine. But that was 10 years ago where we started doing this. And we, are, we realized that this thing has a future. So we just maintain that all the way. Um, well, I mean, after years and years, I mean, this is back in 2018, some, somewhere is in New York. So we have done, uh, so now we have these uh, auto, automatic clash detections. So this is Trimble Connect. And Trimble Connect is, has a free version. Well, not really a free version, but if you're SketchUp subscribers that you would definitely get this, just correct me if I'm wrong. I, I can't remember this because I already have it. So it does help you to track the stuff it help you to do the auto clash detections. And also as you as you see just now, I was trying to assign something to my team members. Okay. So they will be getting an email. Okay. Not just on their, I mean, not just on their on their on their computers, but you can also do that and on your phone. Okay. I'm just showing you guys. So literally, if I've been assigned, let's say just just imagine that I'm I'm the mechanical engineer. I have this thing that clash with the fire service pipe, right? So we're definitely gonna talk talk it out, right? But how? We're talking about what the clash number six six seven one, right? And everyone needs to try to find the screenshot um, to see if that you know the thing is working out. But with the Trimble Connect, you can easily just assign these two guys. And these two guys will be getting the email. They click on the link. It will directly bring you to that clash. So these two guys can just, you know, one guy on the phone and another guy on the tablet. We can talk it out. That's effective communications. Instead of going through a so-called clash list, a lot of company, I mean, a lot of BIM consultants I've, 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 I've seen before is like they're tidying every, every meeting, every working session, everyone is getting, trying to fit in a, a a super long and giant Excel spreadsheet calling, uh, calling something like a what, clash summary list. And they give numbers, they do all this kind of thing. It just, it just makes your work look like, yeah, that's a lot. But look, your job, our job right here is to solve the problem before it's been built. So we don't need to crawl in on site, right? So I think that that's another mindset that probably everyone should be looking into. Okay? You should be shifting from, you know, make your work look giant, look, oh, that's a lot, look like that's a lot. But in reality, you got to focus on solve the problems, right? Providing the help. And speaking of the 4D, um, well, it used to be very popular. I, I, I think that this thing is very, very uh, commonly seen nowadays amongst all the BIM consultants. So like step-by-step, step, you see how this site has been built. But for interiors, it's quite, it's quite lame actually. So every time it's, it's most likely it's gonna be very, very similar. But for buildings, somehow same. If you're talking about like standardized office towers, if you're not talking about like curvy stuff, in generally this sequence looks cool, this animation type. I mean, the format looks cool, but does it really help? That's my ultimate question. It doesn't really help, but it, 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 it's, it's a fairly good piece of marketing material, I could say. So, uh, this job was back in 2015. It's in Shanghai and it's for uh, the, the one of the big four account, uh, accounting companies in the, in the planet Earth. So it works, I mean, for the client. We model everything, we show them how this thing is going to be built. You let them, you know, kind of like, don't worry about it. Um, but for Beamers, I don't see this, this has any value, to be frank. And in fact, that uh, mm -hmm. we have made a lot of stuff uh, because we even have we even have a we even have a kind of like 
extensions in SketchUp. So we write an extension at Ruby script just to help us manipulate this, all these kind of animations, the section playing, moving, all that, all that cool stuff to pack it as animation, right? It used to be like, it's a very hard setting in SketchUp. You need to carefully really thought about it and to make an animation, but later on it, it becomes like nothing. So it's, it's like super common in, in Mozart. Like everyone has, everyone uses that extension can do this kind of stuff. It's, it's because we all, we all aware that this is for the client to help them to make them worry free, right. To help them to see it at least, but it's not really in a professional level as in what we're looking at. Right. What's the really valuable stuff? It's about putting it on site, discuss with the literal workers and all these kind of like different trades of workers to let them literally understand what we're gonna build. Each piece have a dimension. Each piece has a visual representation and how they've been putting together. It's just like a IKEA manual. It's quite detailed. I could say that it's, it's more detailed than an IKEA manual. So the stuff is that because we're a global comp, we're we're a headquarter in Hong Kong. That's true, but we're we're more like a global global firm. So we're we're facing like different kinds of like workers with different cultural background, different speaking different languages. If your drawings, this we call it drawings though. So if these drawings has no languages on it, it's just visual representations. Everyone understand it. Then it's considered as a good drawing. So it's not, I'm not talking about the, the technical drawings like our five key plans or elevations or details or sectional details, all this kind of stuff. It's, it's all architecture language, right? But does it really help? Or how effectively it can help the workers to build? Because what we, by end of the day, every design looks so fascinating in the rendering, but are you really, are you able to deliver that in reality, right? The client buys, that thing they're not buying us buying buying up a, a tons of like technical drawings from us actually that's our job okay and also on the other hand that the sequence inside the sketchup normally once it's set or it, it still can be manipulated in Moser that we have a bunch of people sitting together the engineers the contractors right even the vendors that everyone is sitting down together why we're trying to figure out like where we can cut the cost where we can save some money for real and which work, which trades of works can go in parallel together on this particular scenario. That's a working session. So like this one is actually in Taiwan, in Taipei. It's a famous uh, 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 CPU maker. They are R&D center. Uh, so we have a lot of things that has been typical. It's a, let's say typical meeting rooms, typical offices, you know, that kind of stuff. So we're trying to find the replicates across the 15 floors and what kind of things, if let's say we swap it out or we do some, you know, like time manipulations, duration manipulations that will definitely benefit to the overall cost. This is value engineering, but the value engineering requires a visual representation. So we have to have this VDC build first. So look, um, it's not even in an animation format. It's just some slides. Actually it's a live model screenshot. So we play the model scene by scene, time by time, and we go through a couple of times and everyone trying to mention out some ideas. We brainstorm, we, we bring everyone around the table to think about it. And once we came out, we proposed a, a more cohesive and integrated solutions on how we can save money with you, Mr. Klein. All right. So on the 5D, this thing is, well, um, I'm just trying to uh, do a little bit, you know, um, precautions right here. So this job was in Singapore. Uh, it was one of the proof of concept for us, but that's kind of like 2017 to now it's like six, five, six years ago. Uh, SketchUp all the way have this general report function, actually all the way for more than a decade, but nobody's using it. And we realized that, and once it's been combined with the dynamic attributes, you're able to explore exactly what you have done or exactly what you can do with Navis work because all the information, geometric information, coordinates, definition names, uh, instances, attributes, the attributes, values, everything can be exported as a simple Excel spreadsheet, just like the rest of the, the BIM softwares can do, right? Um, and this thing can be highly customizable. 
So on the most left is actually how does dynamic attributes look like. And the second, in the center of this one is actually uh, one of the component trees that we drag from our own component warehouse. Well, it's similar to your like customized family groups, you know, that kind of stuff. But look, the focus of uh, on this particular uh, Barcelona chair, right? It has the product URL, it has the delivery date, it has the delivery signature, it has the installation date, it has the installation report. And if you're going backwards, you will find the procurement date, where's the procurement file sits and who is the vendor, okay? And when is the warranty? So that's the real valuable information for the facility managers to, to make use of it. Um, I've been, came across a lot of like uh, clients um, worldwide, they hire a beam consultant to pay the prime. Uh, they paid a very premium fee to to have a so called beam model. But after four or five years, nobody is using it. That's really sad. But think about it. In reality, a LOD five hundred model does it even have the, all these kind of informations right here? I mean, the richness of the information probably not, uh, because by standardized typical industrial norm, that kind of a practice is you you normally won't include all this kind of stuff. Okay, but this stuff is really valuable for the facility managers who is running the whole campus. And have a look. So you have the current status can be updated by anyone, whoever has a SketchUp, right? Because SketchUp is pretty a fairly easy to get software. And also you have the installation reports, the delivery signatures, and also the warranty has been prompt, right? And but this is kind of like years and years ago stuff. For now, we have like GPT. Uh, that kind of like AI model. So all this kind of information can be read by a GPT and you can just simply chat. So that's the second, that's, that's the current step that we're doing now, but I'm not gonna share it today, maybe later. So um, the reporting attributes, as, as you can see, whatever you have been customized that you really care, or you talk to your clients, facility management team that they care, you can literally put in there, put inside this model, this schedule model. You don't have to be IFC. And all these attributes is able to be, to be extracted out as in a table format, which they, they really like, All right? So about the operation and maintenance information management, that's in generally about it. And there, I've heard enough, like people saying that, you know, um, using SketchUp, you cannot do like drawings, uh, but every time we install in SketchUp, there's a piece called layout and there will be new products coming up from Tr Trimble as well, but I'm, I'm not confident to say that. Maybe later Leo or anyone from uh, whoever is from Trimble can talk about it. So. Um, as you can see right here, we have a fairly good size um, office, like the key plans, finishes plans, reflect ceiling plans, general arrangement plans, partition coding and, and uh, positioning plans, so and so forth. Also the wall sections, the raised floor sections, and the underneath step four is really kind of interesting because that was the first lead and well dual certified job in, in Asia Pacific for the first time being back in 2014. Um, if you have a more detailed look on it, you will see some stamps, right? Because this is a government submission drawing to China government, to China mainland government. And guess what? They are not even AutoCAD drawn. Nothing is AutoCAD. Back then it was SketchUp to layout and export it as a PDF plus a DWG. And we get it printed as blueprints, get chopped and submit, pass. So there's a lot of, debates around like whether SketchUp do good drawings. I think that do good drawing this thing, it has to be separated out from what you are doing modeling. That's why I'm I'm keep saying that if you really want to have the BIM stuff, you have to get rid of the thoughts that the drawing is important. The drawings are uh, the drawings are priority. The drawing sorry it's not a priority. It doesn't even matter. It's we call it we call them like formalities or contractual requ requirements because that's a, a necessary step for a submission but it doesn't really represent what kind of information you want to pass to the to the ones who is really building it, all right? So, um, and here's another video. As you can see, the logo is still red. Now this the sketch and layout is actually in a blue logo. So this is years ago. And just want to show you guys that that is literally came from SketchUp. So from layout to the SketchUp, yes, it has uh, a view, a style look like 2D, but actually everything is three-dimensional and putting on the right, elevate the heights, right? So that's one of the French company, uh, their campus in, in Shanghai. And actually this is one of the four. In fact, it has four in Shanghai. So um, how the communication should be going visually, 
interactively, right? So you have a model, you do a virtual sidewalk, helping everyone to understand the same stuff, right? And thereafter, you have the simulations done. You can down the, you can you can you can further divide your space, right, by zooming, uh, by calling them out, and then you have you can have you can plan a, a reasonable, good, uh, fairly good uh, uh, layout plan on the functionalities. And thereafter, you have the VR stuff. You can tell your stories and you do the simulations. But however, you at this point of time that you can propose some primary clash detections already with uh, the Trimble Connect. It's just a web app. Okay. And thereafter, you have all these kind of detailed designs. You can do submissions, no problem. You can export to DWG. If some engineers need a backdrop to draw on top of it, it's okay. But the most important thing is you have a VDC. You have a virtually design construction sequencing uh, in a model life. Everyone's sitting down and trying to talk about how we can how we can optimize our construction schedule to save time and also how we can save money. To think about value engineering, is this thing really necessary? Or we can achieve the same efficiency, the same result if, let's say, we save that cost. We still can do this, right? But that is more like a brainstorming we call it a working session. So everyone, every professional discipline, including the vendors, contractors, they might give you a lot of the insights, who knows, right? So the most important thing is gathering together, talk. And thereafter, you will need to talk with your client's facility management team or even the building management to understand what kind of information is necessary. So this approach is more customized that you're not really do a uh, industry so-called industry norms so you have like uh, what's the brand what's the definition uh, the product spec sheet is that even relevant for a furniture piece i don't think so but it's relevant like a fixture cut sheet right it's relevant for water taps why because that's lead required things right so they might need to have that i mean the facility manager may need to have that fixture cut sheet for a water tap or shower heads, right? For race certification for their lead and well. So that may be necessary, it depends on the result that after the conversation. So based on their feedback, we customize those kind of attributes and fill them in as they ask you information packaged in a model to furnish to the client to help them really making use of it instead of just their company buying for, I mean, hundreds of thousands or even a few millions just to buy a model, a virtual assets, but inside all the information is invalid. It's not really useful. All right, so to apply BIM is an expandable process. The core is, the, is your model, which is right, okay? But it's not a linear process. It's not a typical linear process. Every time you do, you change, you reach a milestone, you're going back. You change, you reach another milestone, you're going back. It's not like that. This is the key thing that I want to I want to tell you guys. I know that today uh, most of the audiences like you guys is is actually Bimmer. Uh, probably there are uh, uh, certain architects or designers, but I want you guys to to really ask your questions. If let's say even we are being contracted to do a Bim model or something or Bim service or whatever it is, to starting with design, you do the top half of thinking, move boards, planning, hand sketch, final ideas. Imagine a space, or you get some customized families. You make some instances and fill up all the details. Which one do you do? I believe 100% would be the first, because if you don't have the chicken, well, you have the egg. Well, that metaphor may, may not be appropriate, but however, you get what I mean, right? So another thing is, uh, is everyone is, is mainly talking about like uh, parametric stuff parametric features. In fact, it's been residing in Sketch for more than 10 years. Uh, it's called dynamic components, as I just mentioned to you. So just know that dynamic, dynamic components is not just feasible in filling information, so filling links, right? It also can be in algorithms and methods, or even choices to make smart objects. Well, you call it smart, ob uh, you call it dynamic instances or whatever. So it, in most of the cases, at least for, for our expertise, I mean, our field of expertise, that this is more than enough. It helps us to fast leg, fast hand enough to do a test fits, to do a 3D model, to pop in up 2D to 3D, and to visualize the space, um, to improve the modeling efficiency. It also helps us to do the details like 
you don't need to think about those kind of details, like for instance, stats, right? Or the T profile for the for the great fillings. So it's just as easy as that. And you have all sorts of parameters you can adjust and Sketchup can do all that. And look, this is like 10 years ago, you can do this, but I'm just quite surprised that nobody is really dedicated in this, but we have, we have a team, our team is pretty much dedicated in this. It's accumulated. So next, I'm, I'm just going, I want to share with you guys how we do like propose how, how we win in the project. <laughs> okay, so in a traditional way, even nowadays, even BIM is so hot, it's so popular, that still there is a lot of people, especially in our trade, is, is using like AutoCAD. So this is the very typical uh, stuff. I mean, the workflow that they are going through. They have like MEP, they have like the, somebody who like draws pen, and we have a conceptual designer, which is definitely our artist. And we have, we have a 3D rendering team. Right, so AutoCAD SketchUp and 3D Max is kind of a hybrid together, all in this one workflow. And as you can see, it's pretty much like staggered, right? So it's more like a linear process. It's just like in a factory. And the problem with this process, I mean, from a management point of view, or a technologist point of view, that this process has a has a huge problem that everyone has to wait for others to complete something, then you can build on top of it, right? So it's the waiting time for each professional discipline is too long. So we thought about this. If let's say from left to right is the total, let's say 15 days or seven days that have been given to you, right? If you take out the AutoCAD and if you directly start, uh, starting with three models, you don't, you don't need to do that 2D because it's test fits. You don't need to do, it, it doesn't have to be a DWG or something, right? If your team, everyone knows a little bit more about SketchUp, that's how much time you can save. And because that all those DWGs, original as builds, MEP, whatever things, right, can be directly imported to SketchUp, right? just building boxes, right, to represent a furniture. And you also have a bunch of like uh, 3D models you can get from 3D warehouse natively. It will be really kind of like fast because you directly get rid of one of the software. So you're getting rid of like three steps in a workflow. But if you are, really paying attention that what makes a proposal that these steps in orange is really kind of important because that's what you are going to present to the client. What's that's going to be the totally focus on what you're supposed to do, right? But if the time is being really the same length of the time, that as you can see, all these kind of blocks is getting expanded or I could say like getting longer time to do all these kind of things. Longer time means that you're going to have more time to think to act, to, to, to collaborate, to make better, right? So this is something that we have been realized about eight, seven, eight years ago. And if you do a comparison, you realize that the process has been more compact and there is no more people as a draftsman. Everyone has been involved because normally the draftsman knows the details well, like typical sectional details very well, right? It's like a <clears throat> living, um, section detail library, actually. So they have the expertise. So if you don't treat them as draftsmen, you involve them to be a part of the SketchUp modelers. Together, we model, like MEP, we, we, they do some models, designers do some models, the conceptual designers do some models as well. And even a rendering can directly done with this SketchUp. Well, there's a lot of choices, right? V-Ray for SketchUp or uh, Enscape or Twinmotion on Real Engine, D5, there are so many choices nowadays, right? So it will save a lot of time because nobody's waiting. There is more collaborations across all the disciplines. So as you can see that many of the designers, conceptual designer, when they're starting, they do some hand sketch. I mean, we still keep that, that pen, right? Whatever pen it is. But if you will be involving more people to think about what's gonna be the final view, how does the final view feels, what kind of ambience you want, it helps you to do the artistic part. And also you will have more time to communicate, to change, to do, to re, to revise stuff, and also it all can happening in real time. Okay, and it also gives more time for MEP persons, MEP engineers, to sit in for all these kind of co collaborations to think what gonna be a better solutions. And also, you can have more time to do more detail, more details in your model, and setting up the the, the rendering parameters can be happening at the same time. And also you have more time to rehearsal 
to do the rehearsal. The rehearsal of, a, of any of the presentation is very, very important because it's considerably what the client, what touches the client's that presentation or submission, whatever it is. So overall, that if you, I mean, back then, we just take out the AutoCAD for the proposal part, for the design part, which I, I normally refer to, it will, dram it will dramatically change your perspective on how you actually can get a nice proposal done. And that's the reality happening in Moser. During the COVID, our business is still good. Uh, but that's another thing that I'm going to talk about later. So <clears throat> if you're 2D based, that means that every drawing is segregated, uh, is separated. So whatever drawing you have changed, let's say what you, just assume you have across all the floors, you have a typical meeting room has one change, you need to change the rest. Give me no revenue. Okay, it's the same. And it was spending more time for a senior person like a lead architect, to check individual drawings where it's good or not, where it's right or not. Then you're presenting to all, using all this kind of flattened out 2D drawings, trying to explain to them, you know, this is the, uh, this is the elevation, this is the elevation A, B, C, and D. The workers just won't get it. To our circumstances that we never get it. I mean, our workers are unable because even the language has, has certain issues, right? But if you're doing the SketchUp thing, <laughs> The plan's elevation joinery is 45 to 60, whatever D it is, is all sank into one model. And this concept is even before that out of this model over Revit, I think, that we are we're actually practicing that kind of like thing already. And when you're presenting, when you're sharing, or you, when you debrief these uh, contractors and their workers, right, using the model to turn around, they see, they believe, they know how to do it because they are more familiar than us uh, how to do a proper carpenter works, right? And it will be easier to raise questions from them, okay? And we are able to answer all that kind of stuff. That's a thorough communication. Um, so speaking of the drawing style, I don't really mind nowadays anyway, except the formality drawings that have to be done, submitted to, to, the, to, the, to, the, to the local legislation uh, authorities. So you can do a uh, totally flatten out. You can also, uh, do something like similar to the AutoCAD hybrid with a few sketch or screenshot, uh, like a 3D. And you can you can do it also totally by perspective as well. But you just need to pay attention that everything you need to dimension it right, you need to mark it out. And that's easier. That's an easier set of construction documentation that for our client to consume because it's perspective. They don't need to guess that it's front or red, right? So it's a lot of easier for them to understand. And when they're doing the site inspections or handover inspections, it will be much more easier to you know, to explain. So why this thing look like that? Because you, they have been seeing it, right? So the drawings is not where the communication is happening. So guys, share your models to everyone. Talk to people using your model and do not just send back and forth all the drawings or circle or cloud, revision clouds. That's so boring, okay? And nobody's going to really help, right? So, and... The information, the customized information is, just, this is the trace. I just want to share with you guys. Probably you guys can think of something more fancier in Hong Kong. You guys are very creative. This is a chair. And thereafter, there is an iron chair made by Herman Miller, right? Certain finishes. And it's a cradle to cradle platinum certification product. And also you have like Bifma, whatever, right? And our purchase order place in where and estimated when we get when we'll be getting it outside and actually the delivery is it's late so it has been delayed and who is installing it and the warranty has been activated and when does it broke let's say something has been broke down then we have to do a uh, change right or replacement or, rep or or repairing so this is a general necessary information i could say of a componentry or an instance has been traveled through the life cycle of the project. But in reality, what it is, is classification, definitions, procurement informations, on-site informations, and operation maintenance records. So if you think about that, that will help you to construct a proper information system customized for your own project. And these five stages of information, they can be break down further. But every project is very, very unique. Like every owner, project owner has different focus, right? They have different ways of operation. So you need to talk to them. But however, that these are the rule of thumb of this, uh, the information structure. Okay, so um, why we're making BIM? 
Um, to you guys, I think I have an, another answer. So um, we have like design, as just now I said, design stage informations. We have like uh, operation and maintenance informations. But I'm just going to show you guys one of, one of the, uh, the examples since that COVID has kind of like end. Um, we can finally just review this case. So every BIM software, model authoring software, it has model geometry information, right? Like coordinates, size, dimensions, right? So let's just rewind back. So back in the 2020, January 19th, I, I was in the Beijing International Airport and I flew back to Singapore. Um, this is our Changi Airport. So I just back home. And a day later, Wuhan has been locked down and the COVID literally come out, right? So we face a new type of uh, uh, consultancy job, which is called social distancing replanning. So I just want you guys to have a look at this uh, layout plan, right? It's a project in London. Uh, the green ones and the red ones, the red ones means that everyone knows about social distancing, I believe. So the red ones, you need to take it out, right? So from this to this, if you're using AutoCAD or Revit, what you're gonna do? How long does it take? You gotta measure it, I guess. Then you mark it up as red or green or something, right? And thereafter, you will get this eventually by man by manual hands and mouse. So what we have done is actually we wrote an algorithm to help SketchUp to judge what's going to be the center to center distances, not just two D but three D, um, the distances from coordinates to coordinates, and to visually feedback on the status whether it's usable or not usable. So as you can see right here from the social distancing, if it's two point five meters down to zero meters, it has like <clears throat> one green to six green, right? So this is the basic of the algorithm itself. And we create a extension, a SketchUp plugin uh, called this social distancing thing. And it's very popular during the COVID that uh, everyone is love to use it because it does a very simple thing. For instance, there are four different zoning of the workspace, right? The client, because that was back in 2020. So everyone's kind of like in attention. So UK said that, you know, uh, you can have, you can coming back to the office with certain uh, safety measures. The most important thing is the, is the social distancing. So four zones, we open up which one is better, right? Who knows? But however, I'm just showing to you guys that upon you selecting all these kind of sits and you just create a, a, a we call it a planner, planner group and it will just give you immediate result on the red and the green to give you the maximum numbers that is considerably safe, but still can within the, the I mean, can it's, it's set it to the social distancing that you have been set up. For this case, it's actually six foot, all right? How many seconds actually? So 13 seconds. There are about like 200 plus sits, right? So compared to, to the manual things, this thing is definitely faster, but we want to make more use, useful insights for it. For instance, A or B, which one is better? Let the data talk. So while you are creating those kind of group, there are data generated behind inside SketchUp as well. And if you're looking at the active available seats and the occupants ratio, you will realize that actually the B is better because the occupants ratio means that the, the occupants per, let's say 1000 square foot, right? is lesser, but actually the active seats means that the usable seats is more. So this is how we actually craft that tool. It's not just about algorithm, it's about how we think this information is gonna be used by whom and how we can help them, okay? And overall, after you've done the planning, you will have all this kind of data because this data is very, very important. It's regarding to people's health and safety. And also it's a very useful tool, uh, a format that can be presented to their senior management to get approval, all right? So they, they told us that we want, a, we want a table of data. But look, this thing is very similar to your 5D or 6D stuff. It can be done, customized, fast, right? So um, also exporting about the plan. So we're only providing, we're making all this kind of stuff. Uh, I mean, this working environment inside SketchUp, but we never limit it down to like using other softwares during the COVID. There is no competitors, but we all think that we're all partners to make this world better. So export to JPG and PNG. And also we provided a export for DWG as well, because certain hatchback stuff needs to be tuned after this new occupancy rate, right? So is it BIM? It's definitely BIM because 
it uses the geometry information, coordinates information that has been generated within the BIM authoring software. We wrote an algorithm to establish certain functions to make use of all those data inside parameters and to make it more visible and more accessible for every single SketchUp users as a toolbar. So you have, you even have a guide. You don't need a guide, actually. There is a bunch of buttons. You just click around, you will know. All right. So uh, I think our ways of thinking of BIM is, is quite different because we're not really focusing on how to make a BIM model, this kind of like statement. We're thinking about how we can make use of that, those kind of informations. Okay. And thanks to that, uh, this initiative about the social distancing um, actually is a BIM, so it can be exported as an IFC. I mean, all the res all the all the attributes results can be exported into IFC to be incorporated into any of the other BIM softwares. So happened to be that we got the first prize last year. I remember uh, the day be the year before last year. So it's like more like an open research because we really opened that for the government here, like BCA, our BCA, right. And also we share that with the China, a few of the companies as well, even some of them are our competitors. So yeah, so that's, I need you guys to really think about it because uh, we're not talking about uh, technology matters right here. We're talking about human communications, collaborations, right? So one question real quick is like, Moser, how do we differentiate from our competitors every time? Uh, why our business is good, why our client is satisfied, because beyond the contract that we have signed, we're not really providing you, I mean, we're not really coming here just to satisfy whatever we have been promised within that contractual requirements by the clauses. We're here to help. I think that's that's the most important thing that, that we're differentiating ourselves, that that's truly the differentiation factors between Moser and our competitors in every tender. We do good design. We build good quality workplaces. We deliver, we think uh, ahead for our clients, but everything that we do is because our inner passion and most important thing for whatever technology it is. It, main, it, it was for us, it was main, it is meant to providing help to people, all right? So that's everything I wanna share. And I just wanna share a short video with you guys. Uh, it's like how we know it is doing the fast proposal iterations uh, within our design integration and simulation and technology team. So uh, enjoy. Right, so uh, we are moving to the training session. So, uh, and we do have any anything you want to ask, uh, anything, anything uh, that you want to know, uh, please use it directly. Uh, All right, 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 So yeah, I, I think we gotta go to Q and A if anyone wanna ask. All right, uh, uh, this is Guan, uh, Vice Chair of uh, HKBI. Uh, hi, Jason. Thank you for your hey, uh, great presentation. Yeah. Hello. Uh, so uh, I'll start off with a uh, with a question. Right. You, you mentioned, mentioned um, you mentioned the keywords. You mentioned uh, uh, Moses visualizing and sizing lots of opportunities to improve or implement BIM at the right time. So, so you understand digitalizations and BIM is, is the future. So uh, you mentioned about statutory drawings. 
which is uh, joint generations, one of the key being users in Hong Kong. And I believe that uh, these are just formality and you are focusing more on coordinations and visualizations. So could you just share with us, right, as a designer, how much are we sourcing, right, as a uh, designing firm for Moza, how big is your team size, how much are you investing you know, uh, in, in uh, digitalizations and digital practices, how, how, you are, uh, how many people are on your team working, you know, on big models, you know, considering clients, uh, they, we have demands, we have changes, and you have to reflect these changes in a very quick uh, and short turnaround time. Um, uh, that's a fairly good question, actually. So uh, currently in my um, <clears throat> DISC, the Design Integration Simulation Technology Group, uh, as a global, global group, we now have like 30 people right now, and we're continuously expanding. So, um, and we're more focusing on like uh, pitching on large scale projects because it's more complicated uh, and a more complex in area where it really needs our uh, uh, help, I could say. And because our people mostly, they're not just specified in in SketchUp or renderings or or VRs or anything, but they're they're actually also like lead and well accredited professionals at the same time. So it's more like an anchor point to link up all kinds of like uh, professionals within Moser. And overall, Moser has one thousand four hundred plus people right now, I believe, uh, across the globe. Um, so I think the 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 key things on um, on. Um, as you mentioned in the question, that the turnaround time is getting shorter and shorter. The clients are really demanding nowadays, right? Yes. SketchUp so far is the is the easiest way that we found because for clients' confirmations, what you need is something that is visual. It's not technical drawings. So that's most of the time that when, because I'm a client facing person as well. So most of the time, the client is is want one thing. What you see is what you believe. So if you can turn around the visual part real quick, then you will be able to get better sign off, faster sign off and quality sign off. All right. So I hope that answers your question. OK, uh, we have the first question uh, coming from uh, the attendees. OK, uh, well, the, uh, well, the attendees mentioned Mose is a global company. So there's a question, uh, how can you collaborate with other offices? And uh, the member knows that uh, you have offices in US, UK, and using, uh, and how do you recommend for, for revenue workflows? Uh, sorry, I didn't get the question. You mean how, how I recommend the uh, what workflow? I think how we collaborate. I mean, what okay. was the question? I think the, I mean? the questions mm -hmm. here uh, on the Q&A mm -hmm. was mm -hmm. how do you uh, collaborate remotely uh, using digital tools, right? Yeah. Oh, so uh, there is time zones always. So, uh, so, so in reality, that when we collaborate, right, the 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 information exchanges sometimes will will find a sweet spot, a sweet spot of the time. Like for UK, the good spot for Hong Kong time and Singapore time is around like five to six, and for US, if it's a uh, West Coast is better. The East Coast is exactly like twelve hours. But however, we will try our best to to really kind of like seeing each other over the Microsoft Teams. Um, and really to share the screen and do everything in real time. I, I mean, this probably sounds like a miracle for you guys, but it's it's happening every day. So we launch a, a Teams meeting, we log in, we share screen, and we literally share the screen with the SketchUp models or Trimble Connect. So it's right on the screen. Everyone everyone know that what is going on. And that meeting is really kind of like working session. So some of the real changes is going to happen in up after the meeting. So we are working like two shifts in a day because the natural time mm -hmm. time zones, right? But however, the collaboration, I mean, the, the attendance, I could say that it's passion. You really want to get this thing be done so well, then you you will you will literally get there. So that's 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 I think is the very fundamental. But speaking of the technical ways. Fairly easy. You open up a teams. Uh, you open up a teams meeting. You meet up. Meet up with your with your other 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 continents like colleagues, and you just share the screen. You mm -hmm. use the annotation tool to annotate inside SketchUp, so that you know, or, or you're using the the annotation in the Trimble Connect set up some reminders, so that we have it to the list, and everyone knows what to do. The most important thing is to visually keep everyone on the same page and able to track it. But both of these kind of features 
is residing in the Trimble ecosystem anyway, right? So, but my 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 real advice will be finding the right people to work with. <laughs> okay, that's a good one. Yeah. Okay, uh, another question from um, from Andrew. Yeah, we know that SketchUp could not provide uh, accurate coordinates of your design. Uh, so can you share some know-how of your design uh, with intent? How do you share your design intent with other parties that make good use of it? Uh, the first part, sorry, the first sentence I missed it, you mean that SketchUp cannot provide what? They provide the uh, actual coordinates. The coordinates? Yeah, that was the that was a question from uh, Andrew. Uh, okay, hi Andrew. Extra coordinates. Um, uh, yeah. extra coordinates. You mean global yeah. coordinates? Something yes, like that's that. right. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, Andrew, I try to be very polite because this is the first time I'm here in Hong Kong. Um, your statement is wrong. This is number one thing. Okay. If you have a proof that SketchUp, uh, SketchUp or, uh, or, or any of the BIM softwares cannot provide the exact global coordinates, there is there is a gap. There is a technical gap. You need to do some transformations before, okay? But in reality, the global coordinates can be the same. I'm just telling you right here. Sorry, I I I, I try to do this, okay? And when you're converting to other, when you are when you are just imagine that when you are working with other consultants using Revit or using what whatever like Tecla, right? These coordinates need to be handled by you because if you really want to solve this issue and just go Google it, there's a lot of solutions to it. Not not only by Ruby coding or Python, there's a lot of solutions to it. Okay. There is an offset, I understand. Okay. But it's technically feasible that you can make sure that it's right. We normally, when we're working with whoever, okay, I'm not gonna mention the company names that are partners, we're always doing this as a goodwill because we want to collaborate, we want to make things right. I mean, that's on up. So that's why we do it. Okay. I hope that helps. Okay. So mm -hmm. uh, any more questions from the floor? Oh, I, I see there is one in the chat saying that SketchUp handles large files, but the speed is relatively slow. Um, yep. How can this be applied to large scale construction? Uh, how large? Uh, we're doing like, uh, I'm going to answer the Helix one later. All right. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are really kind of a technical person. It's interesting. It's very, very interesting. Good. So, um, yeah, just uh, FYI, uh, uh, Jason, yeah, mm. we, just we FYI, have Jason, uh, there's also architects, mm. uh, in, oh, yeah. in the group. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay, so that's good. That's great. So, uh, so SketchUp handles larger files. Uh, there is n there is not a problem because any software handles a larger, larger, larger geometries that you will be slow. Okay, and sometimes my Revit open up like after ten minutes as well, and it just fail. So, um, to apply to a larger scale construction, if you're talking about one point, let's say one one to two million square feet of, I'm talking about interior. It's not really about architecture. Architecture one to two million is considerably small, uh, right? And the file couldn't be shouldn't be a, a, a quite huge thing unless you are a hardy architecture because I I work a few projects together with VHA and MRDRB as well. Their pieces is really kind of like fancy, but in generally that's still using SketchUp has no issues on that. I mean that's one of the user behavior. How how's your model and behavior? This is the first thing you probably need to find out. And the second thing is that. For larger scale construction, I'm dealing with like uh, thousands and tens of thousands like workstations and detail models, LD 501, like uh, just now that chair, Herman Miller Aaron chair, right? So my models is not really lagging. Uh, so I think that's, that's, a, that's a model behavior thing, but you need to have a team. The whole team needs to, to share that good, be, good practices when you're doing a model. Every software has its pattern, right? Um, so I'm just telling you that we are handling, uh, well, even a Hong Kong developer, there's a project in, in, in Hangzhou, it's a mixed development. So we got the, we got the model and we just using SketchUp all the way until today. Uh, it has no issues. And that one, the build up size is around the Westlake, by the way. So it's pretty huge and we still able to use it and it's not really that slow. Um, so I, I believe that probably for the model, good modeling behaviors, Trimble, they have a lot of articles on site. Uh, to tell you, like, make use of the components, always purge it, uh, controlling your uh, your texture mapping size, like the pixel size, um, 
and how to optimize the, the model structure, like the nesting level, it will help. Okay, that's what I do. It's very simple, but saying it is very simple. It's just a few principles. But when you're really doing it, you need to keep it, keep a string in your mind that I need to do this every single time. All right. Um, yeah, hope that helps. And uh, the next one, I'm just gonna there is auto there is auto GPT. Everyone knows here's auto Jason Lee. So I check the next one, which is the Helix. Uh, yes, it's a great tool. It's a great tool. And uh, uh, another news, uh, you should be signing up for the for the uh, Trumbull SketchUp that uh, studio version, which you will have the uh, Revit importer. That one, because I was personally in it, in the R&D uh, with Olivia from Trimble, which Leo here referred us to me together. So we co-developed that together with the Trimble team. Uh, so we gathered almost like all the architects and also the, the workplace design firms, well, design firms in general and contractors as well. The Trimble Revit importer is fascinating. I can promise you that because I'm a part of it. So uh, you don't have to use Helix. You can just try the Trimble uh, Revit importer. It's really kind of fascinating. Yeah, hope that helps. Okay, Look, uh, mm. Jason, I, I have one last question mm. for you. Okay, sure. Right, um, I, I, like your, I like your statements about uh, steady drawing drawings uh, and drawing generations. Yeah, uh, to you, 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 you deem them like a, uh, more like a formality rather mm -hmm. than uh, actual um, documentations or a guidance to, to mm -hmm. those who, who are who's going to build the project. So mm -hmm. uh, my question is, um, how could you, could you describe to us at least uh, to our members and, and the public in Hong Kong, what are, what are the prospects uh, for uh, uh, digitalizations or digital practices or implementing BIM in Singapore currently right now? Uh, Singapore, Especially we, have we, we heard Mm. Yeah, especially okay. uh, we heard on. a few years ago, mm. ECA uh, Building Construction Authority has already implemented uh, e-submissions of big models, right? So yeah, let me just, just share your insights. Yeah. Uh, uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so um, I'm a person as an industrial. Uh, I couldn't say myself as an expert, but I'm just an industrial normal people. But uh, yes, I. I, I, I am kind of familiar with the digitalization group and also the ESU group in BCA. Uh, we've done a lot of great things together. And we also do this kind of like webinars with, uh, with BCA and, and BOA, uh, Singapore Institute of Architects as well. So um, just about sharing. Uh, so yes, uh, in Singapore currently that what we have is we have uh, the e-submission has uh, it's been a pass and now is uh, called the core net. So it's more like uh, you're going to upload your IFC files uh, and the certain validations will be going through automatic, maybe around like uh, 70 to 80%. And you will get a feedback generated by the system. And also you will be assigned as, as, as usual, you will be assigned a, 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 a reviewer, right? To review your, your models. But all this kind of checking is no longer in the 2D format. If it's architecture, you have to do it in full IFC. So you have a IFC program, IFC classifications, which you, is required. And uh, we have our own modified, well, I could say that developed in Singapore is called IFCSG. Uh, I'm not sure whether Hong Kong has it, but um, but overall that IFCSG is the current classification uh, uh, kind of like it's a compulsory for, for the corner submission. So Singapore, and Singapore has been, because I I, I, I really proud of, I, I, as a Singaporean, I'm really proud of it. So a couple of years ago that we have, we are, we're not really using the term of BIM anymore. It's more like BIM is like making a model, right? But we're more focusing, as I said, I mean, our nation is moving forward. Um, we're, we're mentioning it as IDD. So in a couple of, uh, if you check online that uh, what happens in Singapore in the recent like three, four or five years that we're, there is no, initially we have a BIM award and thereafter we change it to IDD award. IDD stands for Integrated Digitalization Delivery which it is an in integrated digitalization delivery. And it was mentioned by, uh, by Dr. Tan on Kiwi. So yeah, I, I think that the, the, the way that it, you know, like the names that has been changed is because that uh, in Singapore, uh, in Singapore based companies that what we're thinking is, 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 is different from, uh, we need to make uh, a BIM model via a particular softwares. But what we're thinking about is what kind of information is needed, how we can make use of them and how we can further craft certain applications on top of them to drive to a better and bigger, larger data database that to help this nation, well, the city, city, uh, the city states. 
Um, and currently with the AI booming technologies, I, I know that BCA and a lot of our government uh, authorities step into uh, consideration and it was not really consideration, but actually a development uh, uh, drastically. Young. I mean, uh, on things like GPT or even stable diffusion. So yeah, that's another topic, but Singapore uh, is really doing a lot of like cutting edge stuff right now. <laughs> And it's, I, I believe that if you guys uh, try and dig online, you will find out more that uh, in, in this uh, city state that we have actually pushing ourselves very, very hard. <laughs> yeah. Oh, great. Okay, great. I think it's good mm -hmm. to hear that Singapore, uh, there's great prospects for uh, anyone who's uh, interested in generalizations as their career. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah. this place in Singapore. Yeah. And also that using BIM technology, BIM realistic technology, when you're doing the local uh, green mass certifications, I mean, sustainability certifications, right? You'll get extra 10 up to 14 points, I remember. So BCA, the digitalization group coordinate, this is considered a digitalization wings, right? Like how to uh, have a digital infrastructure. On the other hand, the ESG, the, we are all work together. So it's like, if you're doing something good on this one, you will get points on that. For, uh, for a better, easier submissions as well. So I think that's really kind of like a co-work together. It's collaborations across all the authorities as well. So that's quite important. Hope you guys can can do, you know, better things in, in, in Hong Kong as well. I'm looking forward to it. Okay. Uh, thank you, Jason. Uh, thank you. Thanks. Thank you for spending your time uh, presenting from Singapore. Mm. Uh, hope to uh, mm. see okay. you again. We'll pass, okay. uh, we'll, we'll pass it to mm. the next uh, speaker. Okay. So uh, the next speaker we have uh, Mr. Luo, is the director of information management department of uh, Swadi. So the full name is a China Southwest Architectural Design and Research Institute. So uh, he's present, he's uh, in Chengdu right now. He's he will present in Mandarin. So I pass the mic to uh, Mr. Luo. Hi, hello everyone. Okay, okay. <咳>非常感谢我就用普通话哈 那么在之前呢，我们跟啊 我们呢，其实，在呃工作的过程中呢，啊，也发现了这样一个问题，所以啊，在研发的过程中呢，我们也是希望能够通过一些技术的这样一个研发，啊，让我们的设计能够回归到本质，啊，把我们的设计更多的
，听到，听到啊，听得到哈、啊，好的，好的，就是建国初期呢，有六大区域建筑设计院，那么我们呢就在这个西南地区，其实刚开始呢是在重庆哈，一九五零年啊建院的，那是呃现在目前呢是有三个办公区哈、啊，都是在成都啊。那么我们中建西南院呢，是隶属于中建集团。那么中建集团呢，也是，呃，应该是世界五百强第九位哈。那么同时呢，也是，呃，是，就是 ，E N R 啊中里边报道的全球最大的二百五十家工程总承包商的这样一个呃、啊、投资建设集团。那么营收呢，也是达到了上万亿。<咳>那么我们中建西南院呢？是属于这个啊、呃，我们的设计板块啊。那么设计板块里边呢，应该是属于啊七家设计院里边的 number one 啊。目前呢，我们是有啊五千三百余人，实际上的数据应该是在七千人左右、啊。那么呃，我们的呃平均年龄呢，其实是比较低的，是大概在三十三岁左右。那么全国工程勘察设计大师呢？以及享受政府特殊津贴的人呢，呃，也是比较多的。那么可以说，啊，我们总部的这个专家的资源是比较丰富的，相关的资质呢是比较齐全的。那么同时呢，在科技研发里边也是做了一些的努力，包括像啊，我们国内的哈，就是这个国家科技进步一等奖，这应该是科技界最高奖项。那么一等奖是两项，二等奖是一项，那么以及其他的一系列的研发。那么我们 EZ g s 呢，其实也是属于啊、呃、我们的一项课题孵化出来的。那么在工程项目方面啊、呃，目前已经完成万余项的这样一个项目吧。每年的呃设计方案或者是项目数量，大概在目前哈这几年应该是每年持续在一一千到两千个项目左右。那么比较耳熟能详一点的代表呢，项目有包括像成都天府国际机场、青岛胶东国际机场、重庆江北国际机场、长沙黄花国际机场，还有更多的机场就没有列了哈。那么包括，<咳>那么还有就是体育建筑，体育建筑呢，包括像呃前段时间的成都全国啊、呃、全世界呃大运会啊大运会的主场馆以及啊。呃应该是大运会的场馆百分之八十呢，都是由西南院设计的，包括像凤凰山体育馆，啊，还有奥郑州的奥林匹克体育中心。洪磊，洪洪磊是听到吗？听什么？呃，可以听到吗 ？Hello， 打不打破？可以听到。啊，可以听到吗？可以听到。好的，好的。<咳>那么以及这个交通建筑也是比较代表性的，像成都东客站。那么呃前段时间呢，应该是在建筑学报啊等等这种学术界比较啊火的哈，有这个三星堆的一个博物馆新馆。那么其实老馆呢也是我们设计的啊。那么还有就是成都的自然博物馆。那么以及西南地区首个近邻碳，我们叫双碳啊，近邻碳建筑。中建滨湖总部也是我们的第三办公区，那么这个啊也是比较有代表性的，以及这个我们香港的远洋远洋集团在成都投资的这样一个啊成都远洋太古里，那么这个它的一个啊施工落地哈、啊、以及方案也是由我们西南院来啊实施的。那么在超高层方面呢，就是西南地区第一高楼哈四八九。以及深圳的福田的金融科技大厦，那么还有就是在城市设计方面，就是中原科技城，郑州的郑州整个区域的中原科技城啊，那么这些呢，呃，可以说项目比较多哈。我用你的机，我用你手里的。哎喂，喂，啊喂，可以听到吗？可以听到。啊，好的好的，因为我刚刚听听到有其他的声音<咳>。那么刚才前面呢，就是我们中建西南院的一个基本介绍哈，后面呢我就呃简单介绍一下关于 EZ g s 因为呃这个时间也比较匆忙哈，这个时间比较晚一点了，我就快一点把它
的介绍一下。那么就如刚才呃 Jason 提到的。啊，就如刚才 Jason 提到的，就是我们，呃，其实对于设计很重要的一块，就是如何进行表达和高效的沟通，服务于我们的业主，让各方能够高效的、充分的联动起来，啊，并且为实现同一个目标而去努力，对吧？那么在这样一个背景下呢，其实在中国哈、啊，国内啊，大呃内地哈、啊，那么现在有一个由习总书记发起的非常重要的一个战略，就叫数字中国，而这个数字中国呢。它有一个很重要的基础设施，叫做实景三维中国，其实就是我们说的，啊、呃，倾斜摄影，对吧？倾斜摄影。那么这个呢，是从整个城市，从整整个区域片区出发，那么来进行啊、呃、政府的决策、生活的调度以及生活的规划。那么它也是相关的这个啊、呃、自然资源部的一个文件哈，也是要求啊、呃、规划这种要求哈。那么百分之到二零二五年呢是百分之五十以上的。这些政府的决策都要要求通过这样一个实景三维进行承载和完成。那么它的本质其实就是为了快速的达成共识和高效的沟通，对吧？那么在这样一个背景下呢，我们其实设计行业之前呢是没有办法去使用这些数据的，因为我们这个行业，我们设计这个行业只能被这个智慧城市、数字孪生这些行业被集成，对吧？那么存在这样一个问题，所以我们对于设计行业来说，我们认为这个叫只能看，而没有办法去用。那么在这样一个背景下呢，所以我们就去做这样一个研发。那么同时呢，也是基于 SketchUp 哈。那么我们可以来简单看一下以前传统的流程是什么样的，就是传统的流程呢是由这个测绘单位进行测，啊，外业进行测，测绘测回来之后呢，他拿到一个，也许是一个三维的模型。啊，他再会把它画成一个二维的 C A D， 啊，那么再把这个 C A D 呢，通过翻模，对吧？翻成 S U 或者是啊犀牛或者 Revit， 那么再根据这个模型底模进行设计，那么这是传统的一个流程。那么我们希望达到的是什么呢？就是把测回来的这个数据直接放到，比如说像 SketchUp 这样的一个软件中，直接去进行啊作为底图参照进行设计。那么这个过程哈、啊。以我们已有的工程经验来推测，就是比如说成都的单景台叫城市之眼单景台，那么我们那个项目中的一个啊、呃、实际的呃测试的结果是什么呢？是呃节省了一个月的时间，就是呃只需要测绘单位去现场测，那么三天之内它我们就可以拿到模型进行设计。如果说我们要等到它测绘图纸提供给到我们，可能就已经过去两个月了。那么这个时候啊，如果他们加班，那可能一个月就过去了。所以呢，我们在这个过程中，我们觉得它是能够大大缩短这样一个周期的。这也是我们 EZ 七四设计的一个初衷。第二个初衷呢，<咳>第二个初衷呢，是我们设计行业和数字孪生的这样一个打击。目前呢，我们发现。做数字孪生或者做知识会城市的这样一个行业呢，它其实是需要用啊设计的模型去进行啊用啊三 D Max 或者是用其他什么东西进行翻模，并且进行我们叫 GIS 的一个配准，然后最后再进入到数字孪生。那么在这个过程中也存在大量的这样一个消耗。那么我们呢也是希望能够将我们的设计能够一键导出。啊，或者是直接就可以使用到数字孪生上。那么通过我们的努力呢，目前哈、啊，在项目的实践中，我们也发现，至少可以节约时间啊一个月以上。就是传统的流程，可能我们把模型交给他们，他们要去做这些事情，而我们现在只需要啊一天到两天，直接啊进入到数字孪生系统，直接就可以使用了。
啊。那么这个呢，我们发现是更具有成本优势的，我们也在项目中已经开始实践了。那么简单来说呢，就是在传统的流程中，可以理解传统的流程呢是一个像下山。和上山的这样一个过程，反复的下山和上山，而我们是在中间搭建了这样一座桥梁。<咳>那么我们来看一下我们研发的一个功能，第二部分。首先第一个功能呢，就是我们可以将这个倾斜摄影，也就是实景三维的这个数据呢，啊，直接是呃，就是不需要转任何格式或做任何处理，就直接放进我们的 SketchUp 里边去，可以去预览。那么这个呢，它的轻量化是能够做到极致的，达到什么效果呢？就是大家看到的，<咳>大家看到的这个视频啊，它是一个集成显卡啊，笔记本电脑去运行的啊，那么它可以将上百个 GB 的数据能够带动起来，并且无卡顿，而且是保持它原有啊三厘米的这样一个精度的啊，是可以看到的。那么第二个呢，功能就是我们开发的，是能够让它能够对照着进行建模，呃，什么意思呢？就是它，哎，你可以对着它去把现状的一些建筑进行建模，或者地形或者树木，啊，你可以去进行建模。<咳>那么以后呢，就不需要我,<咳>我们去把周边的这个，我可以基于现有的一个地形，直接就可以进行我的设计。啊，当然也可以对现状的现状的一些建筑哈、啊，进行一个啊简化的呃、啊、处理啊，把我们的需要用来渲染的一些、啊、或者是用来表达的一些东西，可以更加有理化的啊呈现在我们的 SketchUp 当中。那么第三个呢，就是刚才我们说的提取的这个啊，也可以提取我们的地形，比如说提取的，<笑>比如说我们可以。去捕捉一些地面的点，包括树下的一些点，啊，我们可以一键生成啊，我们这样一个地形。那么这些地形呢，是准确的贴合我们所想要的现状的地形的，从而同时也过滤掉无用的一些凹凸变化过多的一些啊繁杂的一些地面信息。那么可以保留出我们设计所需要的一些关键信息，比如说有个陡坎。或者有个边坡之类的<咳>，那么同时呢，我们也可以提取快速提取一些坡段面。那么我们在大型的一些建筑设计或者城市设计当中，可能经常会是需要一个坡段面来帮助我们进行啊、呃、判断或者是进行一些坡面的设计，提出设计策略。那么这个工具呢，可以让我们快速的获得我们的坡段面，甚至还可以将这个坡段面呢。进行展开，啊，可以展开，那么同时也可以对一些道路的纵断面、横断面，那么在道路、河流等线性项目中是比较有适用价值的<咳>。那么同时呢，在一些如果我们只需要一小块去进行一些模式研究的时候，也可以只提取一小部分这个啊，进行摄影的一些模型啊，进行一些。P.S. 啊，或者是一些处理。那么同时呢，第五个功能就是将我们的部分模型提取出来。可以看到哈，刚才我们是一整个的啊，我相交的去，只需要一提取，它就能直接提取出来。那么提取的这个功能呢，我们可以将这个模型分享给其他的团队伙伴，比如说他使用犀牛，或者使用 Revit， 或者使用什么，那么他也可以去使用这样一个模型。那么为什么要这样做呢？最核心点是因为数据量如果足够大的时候啊，那么它就会很卡顿。那么我们为了让更多的人协作，<咳>那么每个人只需要拿出它最小的那一块，那么同时也可以，它的电脑也是可以带得动的。<咳>那么第六个呢，就是导出和导入 DM， 这个呢是和 GIS 的一个互动，就是我们可以将一些。啊 ，GIS 的一些数据啊，比如说处理成这样一个 GIS 数据的一些建筑，它也可以获得这样一个高度图。啊，这是一个高度图。啊，直接。
接导入。啊，可以看到，那么这种呢，它是没有立面信息的，但是它可以将我们的 GIS 进行一个互动。那么第七个呢，就是我们在设计的时候，比如说哈，我们想要把现状的进行一个更新改造的时候，我们想要把其中一部分给它去掉，就是我们倾斜摄影飞回来的这样一个现状的数据给它去掉，或者拍平，或者挖个地下室，那么我们要去上面重新新建一个。比如说这个亭子哈，那么我们就可以通过我们这样一个功能，把我们现状的东西给它拍平啊，或者给它去掉。<咳>那么这一系列操作哈，看起来是非常简单的，但实际上呢，它是非常复杂的。这是为什么呢？是因为这个数据实际上它是有类似于我们的 Google Map 一样，它是有十八个模型，十八个不同精细度的模型。呃，在这个里边呈现，从而保证我们的视觉是非常流畅的，并且啊、呃、很小的，就是很流畅的。那么机器能够带得动的。那么在处理的过程中呢，我们就需要通过我们这个简单的点选，可以一次性将十八个模型，十八个不同精细度的模型都能够拍平到这个地面啊，根据我的需要。那么这样的话，再把我们的设计模型给它放上去。好，这个是。呃，第八个最后一个功能哈，就是我们可以导出这个模型，直接和我们的一些啊 ，Beam 加或者是 Sim 的这种平台，或者叫数字孪生、智慧城市的平台，能够直接连接起来。啊，可以看到这是一个网页版的，那这边也是一样的，这是一个测试，啊，我们是无缝衔接的。<咳>那么好，那么刚才第二个研发功能讲完之后，我们直接来看一下项目实践哈。那么我们在项目中如何去使用这些功能？首先第一个呢是可以看到，第一个功能其实就是数字踏勘。那么，比如说我们西南院呢，其实会有大量的这种城市级的项目。那么，呃，它的规划面积呢是四千零四十二万平米，就是四百平方公里。那么什么概念呢？就是整个香港大概是在一千八百平方公里，也就是说，可能四个项目就能达到整个香港这么大了，就是整个行政区划哈。那么也有可能就是说，我们经常做的一个项目就达到整个香港的一个体量这么大了。那么包括一些机场，呃，那么这个项目中的起步区呢是四点八平方公里，也就是四百八十万平方米。那么在这样一个大的体量中，呃，光是设计师到现场去踏勘，啊，去现场去理解我们的设计的对象或者设计的场地，可能都已经存在了巨大的一个障碍。那么需要大量的人力和物力去投入，那么按照传统的方式，它肯定是啊非常慢的，而且我们啊需要等两个月的一个测绘的 CAD 图纸啊，那么 CAD 的我们可能也啊无法去理解这个场地，那么我们现在是采用这种数字踏勘，三天的时间，而且可以所有的团队哈啊不论是啊做道路的、规划的、建筑的、市政的，还是景观的，还是装饰的。还是说是水电管线的，那么他所有的人都可以在这样一个基础上进行沟通、进行啊交流啊，那么呃这个对我们来说是非常具有呃意义的啊，也是效率提升非常高的。那么第二个呢，就是数字研判，也就是说我们基于现状得出一个什么设计的呃策略，或者是呃呃得出一个设计的一个。啊，意向，那么如何去做呢？我们先来看一下这个视频
那么在这样一个场地中，其实当时我们有有一个非常大的挑战，就是场地中有啊一千多个宅基地。那么当时我们想要做的是，想把这个田园综合体呢，打造成一个叫国际田园生态商务区。那么里边呢是需要引入到像啊 Google 啊、阿里啊、腾讯啊等等、字节啊等等这种世界一流的企业来做一个叫。啊、呃，国际的田园的呃办公总部，那么它也是办公区，但这个办公区呢，就需要筛选出一百多个最佳的这样一个宅基地，那么去利用它做啊、呃、我们的办公场地。那么如果是按照常规的去判断，它的啊、呃、时间或者是它的效率是非常低的，那么花的时间也特别多。那么<咳>我们通过这样一套啊、呃、Easy g i s 之后呢？就让我们的很多的分析啊，就变得更加的科学，而且快速。我们可以快速的知道哪些区域它的视觉效果是最好的，哪些区域我们的景观啊资源是最好的，哪些区域我们的啊地形条件或者是我们的宅基地它是可以去利用的。那么在有限的资金下，如何快速的？快速的帮政府做出决策。那么第二个就是关于多头决策，就是呃设计哈。那么我们认为最核心的点是在于如何将您设计的思考或者设计的意图啊，或者设计决策的原因或者依据传递给你的甲方，或者是更多的参与方，让他们能够理解你的设计是合理的、是科学的啊、是可行的。那么我们通过这样一个方式，让我们。啊，之前我们有一个比较具体的场景哈，那么就是啊，市委书记、县委书记、区委书记以及各个啊啊什么呃、啊、土地局、什么呃、啊、林业局、各种局以及乡当地的乡镇，那么所有的领导坐在一起，呃、啊、两三百个人在一个会议室，那么共同去决策这个方案可行还是不可行的时候，那么你需要一个强大的啊可以对称信息的这样一个。啊，一个一个载体，去让更多的人去理解你设计的合理性。所以，我们通过这一套方式，让我们的决策，我们自己预估哈，起码是加快了三个月。啊，帮助政府的领导能够坚定信心，同时也能够帮助政府的领导，能够让更多的部门能够啊认可这个决策。啊，那么我们当时在这里边就是啊，在保护景观的同时，还保护呃，在在我们利用景观的同时。还保护了我们全亚洲最大的马尾松林，啊，那么在这样一个场地中<咳>，那么第三个呢，就是呃，设计的分析还不够，我们想要把它做成啊，我们的效果图或者是渲染图 rendering， 去让更多的人或者是施工方，让啊民众能够更多的去理解。那么我们在这个设计当中呢，就可以。前面其实这个视频也能看到哈、啊，就是我们设计师是可以利用这个底座直接进行建模和设计的，这个就是我们建模设计的一个结果。可以看到这个就是现状的一些房屋，这个是我们拆掉了一些房屋或者是利用农田新建的一些办公总部。那么在这个过程中，我们的设计师啊以及不同层级的设计师可以高效的进行沟通。进行高效的反复的设计的验证，我们自己的设计是否合理，能不能够让呃真正能够落地下去，而不是说以前我们做一张效果图，可能跟现状也不一样，对吧？那么它的尺寸、它的材质、它的啊、呃、效果是不是合理？那么这样的话可以让我们一线设计师提高效率，同时也让也让我们的效果图能够让更多的人。能够理解啊，我们的设计
。那么后面我们来看一段，就是我们将这个啊 Easy Cheats 的模型啊放到我们的 Rendering 里面啊来进行渲染的一些内容。<咳>啊，这张图其实可以看得比较清楚哈、啊，就是，啊、呃，这个呢就是我们实景三维飞回来的这个现状的模型，可以看这是个白膜，这地方就是农田。那么我们是想要告诉领导和我们的决策者，或者是更多的参与者、民众，那么我们这个地方将会做什么？它会做出来是什么样子？和原来是什么样的一个关系？那么通过这个就可以非常清楚的、明白的啊。就是了解到前后的一个对比关系，它发生了什么，改变了什么，那么也帮助更多的啊利益相关者，比如说他就是住在这里的一个民众，或者是啊政府的领导，那么他可以快速的根据现状的资源和条件，做出合理的决策。那么同时呢，也不用担心这个东西是无法落地的，或者是存在信息的。啊啊，期满或者是啊错误或者是偏差，那么这个一定是非常准确的啊。那么同时呢，我们这个 Easy g i s 呢，呃呃，利用就是也参加了我们去年哈，叫首届啊，由这个中央网信办和中央这个呃，由中央网信办和中央通信部哈，他们一起。办的这样一个啊数字乡村大会啊数字乡村创新设计大赛，那么把我们 Easy Kids 呢作为其中的一个很重要的一个点啊拿去做啊参赛，我们也获得了这个优秀啊优秀奖。那么同时呢，这个大赛的结果呢，当时我们也是在去年的世界互联网大会乌镇峰会上面啊进行了展出啊，我们的啊这个领导哈到上台进行了这个颁奖，就是去领这个奖杯。<咳>那么第二个类型呢，实践就是城市更新设计，就是城市的更新设计是现在目前内地非常重要的一个课题，因为城镇化率呢已经达到了百分之六十多，那么呃应该说啊、呃、新建的项目将会逐渐走向历史的尾声，那么更新和改造将会成为啊、呃、内地啊、呃、主要的这样一个城市。呃，城市的这个建筑项目的一个主旋律。那么在这样一个背景下呢，我们其实也参与了大量的更新项目，这是几个比较有代表性的，和刚才的逻辑是一样的。那么就是上面这是改造前的，这是我们改造后的。那么给业主的这样一个，给甲方、给相关参建方的这样一个啊感受是非常不一样的。我们先来看一下，简单看一下这个视频吧。对，就是，那么在城市更新类这种项目中哈，其实最常见出现的问题是什么呢？就是资料缺失，而且另一面的测绘，对测绘人来人员来说是一个非常复杂和困难的工作量。那么在这样一个情况下，如何进行快速的设计的推进和项目的推进，就成为了核心问题。那么我们通过呃呃实景三维哈，或者是叫我们这种的一个方式
那么使放进我们的设计里边，我们设计人员就可以对它进行高效的对照式的更新和改造。那么同同时呢，还有第二个很关键的点在哪呢？就是更新类的项目，由于缺乏大量的资料，需要人工在现场进行驻场设计，而驻场设计对于设计院来说。可以说，在成本上面是毁灭性的打击，因为我们的人员在总部也许能同时做十个项目，做二十个项目，而在驻场设计的时候，你只能做这一个项目，那么你的人效比就会非常的低。所以，我们通过这样一个方式，避规避了大量的这样的一个驻场设计，我们的设计人员只需要在关键的节点去到现场就完全 OK 了。那么，在更多的时候，我们通过这样一种方式。用远程会议，让更多的人，就像我们今天一样，让更多的人去理解我们现场是什么情况，我们改造为什么要这样改造，改造后的成果是什么样，造价是多少，以及能不能实现，空间尺寸能不能实现，当地的这些房东他同不同意，人家愿不愿意，有没有谈好，那么多方的这样一个参与，让更多的人能够信息得到对支撑，啊。可以说，我们赋能了所有的参建方、政府方、施工单位、居民代表等等，那么让更多的人能够满意、能够认同政府的这样一个行为，那么极大的降低了，就是啊，就是极大的提高了政府啊，我们去推进这样一个项目的一个一个效率，同时也极大的降低了我们自身本身的一个成本。那么下一个就是也是一个城市更新设计，我们简单看一下吧。那这个案例呢，其实它是一些点选的一些改造，它并不像前面的一个项目那种大面积的。那么呃，我觉得也是非常有啊效率的一个提升吧<咳>。那么第三个类型呢，就是建筑设计。那么建筑设计比较有代表性的有其中这样一个项目，就是福建的中共平潭综合实验
区的一个党校。那么这个设计呢，是比较重、比较重要的一个项目吧，就是福建平潭市他们呢，对这个呃这个项目是很重视，同时呢，也对这个设计师的要求很高。那么他其实也提出了一个要求，就是要求我们的社总，也就是我们的大师专家去驻场，或者是怎么样的。那么这样的话，其实对我们来说是啊、呃、非常不利的。所以呃，我们全国有啊啊三十多个分支机构，在三十多个不同的城市，以成都为总部。那么这样的话啊、呃，对我们来说就非常的不利。所以呢，我们其实更希望的是能够高效的利用我们总部的这些大师或者是专家的这样一个资源。那么通过这样一个方式哈、啊，我们的专家就可以快速了解。这个我就不放了哈，其实就是呃快速的验证我们的啊、呃、设计总负责人，他可以呃去验证他设计的合理性，找到他的问题并进行优化，那么以及线上远程的沟通等等，这些都让我们啊、呃、我们的人效比啊会更高，同时也能够保证这个项目的质量，并不会说因为人没有到现场而让设设计的质量或者是和现状有较大的出入，因为。这个呢，我们我们西南院的很多的项目呢，可能和刚才 Jason 介绍的项目会有一点点差别，是因为呃 Jason 介绍的很多项目图鉴它都已经完成了，而且它的规规模哈和这个周边的城市其实并没有特别大的一个关联或者是很大的影响，而我们做的很多项目，它往往是一个地标性的或者是啊、呃、超大规模的啊、呃，它要需要和城市发生强烈的关系。和和这个互动<咳>，那么后面马上带来一个项目，卡住了，哎喂，能听到吗？喂，可以啊，可以，老公可以啊，哦好,好，我好像，我好像电脑的这个。可能是你太大了，你的视频可能会停了一下。啊、呃，对，可能视频太大。等你试一下停止分享，然后再分享一次。对、呃，我其实是想停止分享来着，但是我的电脑已经不听。呃，我的鼠标和键盘好像已经没有反应了，我看一下是不是视频好喂，罗工，听不到你声音。啊、哦，好的，好的。陈主席，我您稍等一下哈，我重新。
回鹅宫。Alright, members. Uh, please, please be patient. While the speaker is going to fix his mic and uh, his back hand, he's going to rejoin just to hear a little bit ago. Hello members. Hello members. Um, please accept our apologies. The speaker will take a few more minutes uh, after joining back. It's going to fix the technical problems. Hello. Wait, wait. Wait, 那我接着开始看可不可以陈主席我现在开始你还可以吗看到视频了你可以开始看到视频你可以开始啊好好的好的好那我们就我就直接用这样一个画面来讲吧 那么在这样一个建筑当中，其实可以看到哈，就是我们的泸州人才中心的这样一个项目，呃，它其实是利用现有的一个老酒厂哈，那么把它的宅呃基地拿出来之后重新改造成这样一个泸州的人才中心，它
。哎 ，Hello， 刚才这个视频有看到过吗？看到了，看到了。哦，好的好的，就是在这样一个项目中吧，就是呃，可以说就是对于一个政府来说哈，那么他要建这样一个泸州市的人才中心。啊、呃，它是展现的出是一个政府对于人才的这样一个态度，是有强烈的这样一个象征意义的。那么所以说我们在做建筑的时候，我们就不光是在做这个建筑了，而是要通过这个建筑的设计去展示出啊、呃、政府或者是甲方的这样一个设计的意图。那么这个才是我们设计啊、呃、才能够发挥的这样一个价值。所以呢，我们在这个设计当中，并不仅仅是从建筑本身考虑出发。而是从整个啊、呃、建城市周边 1.2 平方公里的这样一个范围出发，我们把周边的倾斜摄影飞回来之后，使把我们的建筑在这个场地中进行推敲和设计，让我们的建筑和城市进行对话，啊，从城市的整个角度去考虑建筑应该如何进行设计。那么比如说在这个建筑设计当中，我们不仅考虑的是我们的材质啊等等等等这些内容。那么很重要的一点是在于，那么这些人才在这样一个建筑当中，能不能够感受到长江的这样一个真实的江景？它不是说我们去啊啊用效果图去表达，而是用一个非常真实的所见即所得的啊，你一定能获得这些东西的这样一个一个方式，让更多的人才去感受到政府的诚意。那么这个才是我们设计。的真正的一个价值，去帮政府，去帮我们的客户实现他的价值，这也是设计所展现出来的一个价值。<咳>那么我们当时有一个说法叫做啊，能够让人才真正感受到政府的一个关怀，啊，让人才能够呃有获得感、幸福感和参与感，并且在这个设计当中他也能够参与进去。<咳>那么最后一个呢是景观规划设计的这样一个内心啊，啊，第四个也不是最后一个。那么在这样一个景观设计当中，啊，我们又是怎么去做的呢可以说，其实在这个项目当中哈，我们当时遇到的最大的第一个问题就是这个项目策划的问题，就是如何去第一个问题就是如何去划定我们设计的范围，就是这个地方呢是从高速路成都的高速第二高速下来之后，进入到现在的新天府国际机场的必经之路，那么这条道路会彰显了整个成都东部新城的这样一个形象。那么这样一个形象的一个通道，如何将这条道路啊，不仅仅是变成一个道路，而是变成一个啊一个城市的形象，一个入口的形象，或者是一条风景的道路？那么我们就把这个区域通过视线分析啊，去划定我们的设计红线。那么有了这个设计红线之后，我们才能做出科学的设计的决策。那么跟前面一样，我们可以啊通过倾斜摄影或者是无人机用我们的。一次祭祀就可以快速对我们的啊现状的道路、现状的河流、现状的水系，甚至于它的淹没啊，都可以做出科学的分析啊。因为如果我们的淹没洪水淹上去了之后，那这些区域你是人是需是有安是有危险的。那么以及我们的河流如何进行设计，那么这个也需要进行通过流速的设计、流向的设计。一系列的分析，去啊给出我们设计对应的一些策略和工程的一些模式，去应对它
，那同时做到生态的，同时做到安全的，而且还要做到美观的。那么这是一个复杂的一个啊场地性的一个一个设计问题。那么以及它现状的建筑的啊现状的水电的等等。那么通过这一系列的哈，我们说的设计红线、树木增减、生态保护、地形塑造、水文水利设计，那么帮。帮助我们的汇报和沟通起到了决定性的作用。可以说，当时在做这些项目的时候，都存在政府领导信心不足，不知道最后会呈现出什么样一个效果，要花多少钱。那么，通过我们这些非常真实的啊现状和设计后的一个对比，以及真实的造价的核算，那么帮助啊政府下定这个决心。所以后面我们的呈现效果其实也是非常不错的。啊，就是降息源的这样一个交易工具，最后几步要这块<咳>。那么第五个类型就是数字孪生智慧系统。那么这个呢是成都啊、呃、最繁华的地方，就是金融城片区。这个是中间的啊、呃、金融金融城总部，那么啊也是 Poor Angel 设计的。那么我们中建西南院的第二办公区呢就在这个北边。那么这边呢就是成都市政府，啊这个地方是英九九，啊那么。啊，可以说是成都最繁华的，啊，也是最重要的一个片区。那么我们呢，也是基于这样一个成果呢，做了我们啊中建西南院第二办公区的一个数字孪生系统。可以看一下我们是如何衔接的。咳咳咳可以说，就是我们的数字孪生吧，呃，让更就像我们 SketchUp 平常说，人人皆可呃 BIM 或者人人皆可 3D 建模一样，它让我们的数字孪生变得更加的简单和简单易懂啊，同时呢，啊、一日即死，让我们的这个数字孪生的数据啊来源更加的可靠啊，因为我们的设计就可以直接去提供，同时它可以更加的精简，更加的。中间不会有更多的环节，那么也更加的方便，可以去实现我们数字孪生。这个在我们的项目中是完全走通的。那么最后一个就是简单来介绍一下，就是关于这个灵感渲染，就是我们在，但这个是一个虚拟项目哈，真实的项目我们暂时还不太方便去去放。那么比如说这个成都的交子金融中心，刚才看到的这个，这里的这两个最重要的两个双塔，现在成都到。到节假日的时候，几乎全网刷的哈，就是什么成都你好啊，各种的，这种基本上都是在这个双塔上面进行展示的灯光秀。<咳>那么我们就把这个双塔呢，啊，简单的建了一个白膜，就是就是用 AI 哈，怎么把这个双塔做一个多方案对比，那么同时也能够看到周边的环境啊，来看一下我们的这个方案是否合适啊，我们来可以。我们使用这个 AI 的灵感渲染呢，就可以快速的获得多个方案，而且是同角度的，啊，没有任何位移，那么也可以方便更多的决策者，可以快速的进行决策。好，那最后我来总结一下吧，就是关于我们的价值，是 EZGIS 呢，我们目前哈、啊、觉得呃比较有价值的有几个环节或者阶段，第一个呢就是数字刊地阶段，就是呃。大型的项目，特别是大型的项目，它的一个勘察或者是现场的踏勘的成本啊，其实是非常高的，特别是跨地区的、跨省市的啊，它的机票、它的差旅啊，这些成本其实啊，每笔看起来也许不大，但是加到一起，我们全年一年有几千个项目，那这个成本就非常的可观。呃、啊，第二个就是我们的数字研判，那么。呃，即使你去了现场，也许你看的是就像盲人摸象一样，也许你看的只是场地中的一部分。那么，有了 EZG， 我们可以反复的在啊，设计师可以反复的在电脑中可以去观察，可以去分析，可以去模拟
，可以去研判，而且可以快速的研判出我们设计的一个方向，啊，为我们的设计提供科学的一个决策的依据，啊，这个是非常重要的。第三个呢，就是数字的建模，就是刚才我们可以基于这个 Easy D 这次的底座，我们一线的设计师可以精准的进行建筑的推敲，那么设计呢可以和现状进行融合，那么这也避免了。就是从源头上避免了我们的设计不合理，或者是和周边的环境啊无法衔接，啊无法无法融合<咳>，甚至是无法落地，因为很多我们见的特别多啊，就是以前的设计就是，也许现状有一个很大的一个陡坎，那么设计可能是设计师大家都喜欢做一个平地设计，对吧？那么把所有地方当都当成一个平地来进行设计。那么有了这个 e a s y 呢，我们的设计可以让它更加贴合现状的一个情况，更加卷落一些。其实前面我们也能看得到，就是就是在这个这个地方，就在这个地方可以看到我们很细节的一个地方，就是这个现状是一个丘陵地区，它可能有多个台地。那么我们设计的时候，其实我们的连周边的这个连廊。它都是和地形所契合的，啊，就不是说我们把它直接拍成一个平面就进行设计了。那么第四个呢，就是高效沟通。那么我们可以说，使用 Easy Gis 的线上会议基本上就属于，就相当于是施工现场，方案推敲也是所见即所得。那么让我们更多、更多方的、更复杂的这种沟通，能够高效的对称我们的信息。那么第五个呢，就是服务甲方，就是其实在这个过程中，我觉得我们是呃非常受益的，就是甲方会，因为对于甲方来说，找设计院他最大的不确定性或者是心里最担心的就是啊、呃、你会不会给我做出来的和现状完全不一样，就经常会出现效果图和最后实施出来的出现我们叫内地的说法叫买家秀与卖家秀的一样一个巨大差异，那么。通过这种方式，也可以让我们的甲方能够放心把项目交给我们。那么第六个就是易于普及，就是 Easy Gis 呢，它对电脑没有任何要求，集成显卡、笔记本电脑随时都可以打开，甚至于比 SketchUp 的啊、呃、配置要求还要低啊。那么可以说没有任何要求，而且操作呢非常简单易学啊，同时与现有的设计流程是完全融合的，就是不论你怎么去使用，它都可以和你的设计流程。第七个就是数字孪生，就是和我们的啊现有的数字孪生智慧城市可以一键衔接，并且呢是他们的一个生产的一个底层工具吧，避免我们反复的去进行建模。那么这几个啊是我们目前总结的吧，就是啊提升我们的质量，同时也提升我们的效率啊，不以啊建模翻模为目标啊，为以服务甲方、服务业主为目标，或者是提升我们自己的效率。啊，让我们的设计更科学、更合理的目标<咳>。那么非常感谢，那么再一次感谢我们啊学会还有我们 SketchUp 的一个邀请。那么期待啊您的提问和交流，谢谢。